Tuesday. Here's some baseball in Athens, Ohio, inside Bob Wren Stadium. Joe Maduro alongside Andrew Allison, ready to bring you the matchup between the Ohio Bobcats and the Marshall Thundering Herd. So we're just about minutes away from first pitch. But Andrew, Ohio had a weekend series over the weekend against NIU that they split the doubleheader on Saturday. Had their game on Sunday canceled, but look to continue this home stretch in the right way against a Marshall team that comes in very good on the season, 10-6-1 and in a very good lineup from top to bottom. The Bobcats, like, like you said, they, they got a little bit of a break, which is nice to have. You always want that. And this is kind of a prove-it game for them. They start off the season rough. They're starting to gain some momentum. And like you said, they have a good Marshall squad coming in here. This is a game where they kind of have to figure out, like, where are we actually building momentum? Or is it just kind of something that just happened to be? This is a big prove-it game for them. Start with the visiting starting lineup for Marshall. Starting in center field, leading off is Isaiah Pugh. Real quick, starting in center field for Marshall is Luke Edwards. Batting second, playing second base is Christian Lucio. Batting third, playing left field, Cole Williams. DHing and batting cleanup is Ryan Leach. Batting fifth and playing shortstop is Travis Sankovic. Playing first base, batting sixth, Daniel Carinci. Behind the dish and batting seventh is Kyle Schaefer. Batting eighth in right field is Jordan Phillips. And batting ninth in playing the hot corner at third base is Eddie Leon. And they also face a starting pitcher for Ohio in this one, Brendan Roeder. Roeder getting his first start on the season. And he's had a pretty good start to the year, a sub 1.5 ERA and eight innings pitch, four strikeouts, nine hits, only one earned run allowed so far on the season. Roeder his last time out pitched four shutout innings against Kentucky, and he'll look to do so against this Marshall lineup here this afternoon. He's got a tough guy to lead off. He's got Edwards batting 370. He's played 17 games. He's come across the plate 16 times. And we are ready for the first pitch as Roeder will wind up and fire the first pitch for today. Swung on and chopped foul towards the third base dugout as it will be an 0-1 count to Williams, as Andrew just mentioned. Great start to the season for him, batting 370 on the year as a right-handed pitcher, Roeder. Ready for pitch number two. Here it comes. He swings and pops it right side of the infield, high in the air. Baker is roaming over it at first base. He will squeeze it with two hands. And the first batter for Marshall is retired in two pitches. Good start on the afternoon for Roeder. Yeah, big out. Always always key to get the first out there. You always like to get that one. But it doesn't really get any easier with, Cole, uh, with Williams coming up here to the plate. And I'm sorry, it's actually Lucio. I was looking at the wrong sheet. Lucio, a 281 batter, so. Batting from the left-handed box, just two pitchers to retire the first batter. As Roeder's first pitch into Lucio, swung in line down the first baseline, just inside the bag, it's fair, and into the right field corner. Lucio turning first, heading towards second, where he'll jog in easily with a stand-up double with one out. Marshall has a runner in scoring position as Lucio jumped all over that first pitch there from Roeder. You see Marshall swinging early and often so far in the top half of the first. Yeah, there's been no no conservative, conservativeness about this approach from Marshall. Like you said, I, I don't think they've set on a pitch yet. Uh, I think they've or let a pitch go by yet, swinging every time. This time it worked out for them. They get a runner in scoring position. So Roeder have to deal with that runner in scoring position early on. Now coming up to bat is Cole Williams for Marshall. Coming in, swinging a hot bat at 338 on the year also from the left-handed Batter's box. Roeder from the stretch. First pitch comes right down Main Street and will be a called strike as that's the first pitch taken by a Marshall batter so far in this first inning. Williams looking to pick up RBI number six on the season if he gets something to the outfield here. Roeder towing the rubber. Takes a look back at the runner at second. Now will come home with the pitch. Swung on ground and back up the box. Up the middle and out into center field for a base hit. Lucio Coming around third, he will score easily standing up, and it's an RBI base hit for Cole Williams. Six RBI for him on the season, and Marshall strikes first in this game after the leadoff batter was retired. Back-to-back -back base hits, and Thundering Herd have a run here in the top of the first. That'll be key here to see how Roeder kind of settles in. You know, we, we talked about he got the first out, but then gave up hits on back-to-back. -back. He trails by one now. Still a lot of time left, but he does face a DH. A good one at that. That brings in Ryan Leach, the bat first pitch into him, misses low and inside, taken for a ball. Want to know the count? 
Leach in the DH spot in the game this afternoon, but he is very talented behind the dish for this Thundering Herd squad. As Roeder will come set at the belt. The 1-0 delivery. Swung and popped high and back behind the press box here at Bob Wren Stadium. It's Leach well under that pitch to even up the count at one apiece. But back to that point on Leach. He is a part of the Buster Posey watch list, which is made up of 77 catchers across the country in Division I college baseball. And that award is awarded to the best catcher at the end of the year. 1-1 pitch from Roeder taken low in the dirt for a ball. 2-1 the count. Leach very patient up there, which has not really been Marshall's M.O. three batters into this game. They've been super aggressive, but Leach is just sitting back and letting it come to him. He comes in the team leader in home runs and RBIs. He swings and hits a soft line drive just over the head of third base out in the left field for another single. Three straight hits in a row for Marshall, and they have Roeder timed up pretty well so far in this first inning as that will keep the train rolling. It'll be Sankovic, the number five batter, due up next. Yeah, that's just a little unfortunate Fortunate for Roeder. He kind of jammed up Leach there, but unfortunately it was still a strong enough swing and a strong enough hit to kind of just leak over the third baseman's head and into the outfield for the third consecutive hit for the Thundering Herd. Taking a look out in the field for Ohio so far in this game, moving from left to right, Casper Bauer is at third base. At short, it is Nick Dolan at second. Traben Funderburg and Kale Baker over at first base as the first pitch comes in, swung on and lofted out into left field. Coming in a couple steps is Harbert. He'll make the grab with his left hand and fire it back in to the infield. So just a one pitch at bat there for Sankovic. Sankovic and a very needed second out there for the Bobcats in this first inning. That brings up Carinci. I mean, he's not that great of a batter. He's at, he's at 268, so he's not terrible. He's only got nine RBIs, but if they can get an out here and Roeder kind of gets roughed up a little bit but still only gives up one early on, it might allow him to settle in. Despite the pitches, despite the amount of hits, has been a limited pitch count, only 10 for him so far in this first inning. First pitch into the next batter gets taken on the outside corner for a called strike. 0-1 to the batter, Daniel Carency, the first baseman for this Marshall team. But we mentioned it's a very talented lineup from top to bottom for the Thundering Herd, batting just a tick under 300 on the year, 294. Two on, two out, 0-1 count, swung on and lofted out deep into right center field. Ranging over is the center fielder. That's Peterson. He'll make the catch on the run, loses his hat in the process. One run on three hits for Marshall, two left on, one nothing Thundering Herd heading into the bottom of the first inning. Operated Auto and Truck Tire Center. At Warehouse Tire, we focus on customer service with a professional staff and a huge inventory of wheels and tires for a variety of applications, including farm and industrial. We feature top brands, including Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal. Warehouse Tire is also a full-service auto service shop. Let us help with all of your under-vehicle maintenance, including brakes, shocks, struts, and alignments. Visit Warehouse Tire on Hebbardsville Road in Athens or online at warehousetireinc.com. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Ohio University Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. Bobcats coming up for their turn to hit in the bottom half of the first innings. We'll take you through their starting lineup in this one. Leading off in center field, Isaiah Peterson. Batting second at second base, Traben Funderburg. Batting third and playing third base is Colin Casper Bauer. Batting clean up behind the dish is Mason Minzy. Spencer Harbert bats fifth and plays left field. Harrison Johnson, D the DH in this one. Batting sixth, Kale Baker. Batting seventh, playing first base, A.J. Roush. In right field, batting eighth. And Nick Dolan rounds out the order, batting ninth, playing shortstop in this one. And they'll have to face a pitcher for Marshall, Chad Heiner, making his second start on the year. He's had a rough start to sophomore for the Thundering Herd. A 7.20 ERA to this point in 10 innings pitch. 14 strikeouts, 7 walks, and 18 hits. And that tells you, Andrew, the kid's got good stuff, but it just comes down to the control. And that often happens with younger pitchers in the college level. Right, and he's got a lineup that's kind of inconsistent throughout it. It's a it's a top-heavy lineup, 
So this is where you need to really rely on your, on yourself to get yourself through those top heavy part, but then you can't ha lose your control and let the you know six, seven, eight, nine get on base. And leading off the left-handed hitting center fielder Peterson, he's not shy, takes a big rip at the first pitch, heading back towards the wall at left center field, and it gets ran down at the warning track by the center fielder Edwards. Peterson gave that one a ride to open up the ball game, but it's just allowed out for out number one in the bottom of the first, and that brings up Traben Funderburg. Yeah, I thought we were getting first pitch home run. I thought that one was going to end up tracking out, but unfortunately just didn't have the distance. It would have been a heck of a way to start the game. With that, Funderburg, the second baseman, digs in, batting just 167 so far on the young season. Only a sixth start on the year. Takes a big cut at the first pitch and comes up empty. 0-1 the count to Funderburg. Yeah, Funderburg, he, he hasn't really played in a lot of games. I mean, he's seven games out of 12. Did miss about five. Only a sixth start. Second pitch catches the outside corner at the letters for a called strike. And Funderburg quickly down in the count. Nothing in two. Yeah, now you got to kind of figure out what you are as a batter here. Down 0-2, you got to battle your way back. From the windup, Heiner kicks and deals. That pitch is, misses well outside for a ball, snared by the catcher. Schaefer on the backhand. Good take there from Funderburg, 1-2. and two. Yeah, they're just trying to get him to chase with something there. Way to lay it off. Heiner kicks and deals. The 1-2 pitch swung on, popped right side. Shallow outfield, tracking back to second baseman. Coming in is the right fielder, but it will be the second baseman, Lucio, that calls off the right fielder, Bill Ups, and he'll make the snag over the shoulder for the second out of the inning. Marshall leads it 1-0 in the bottom of the second with two away, and that'll bring up Colin Kasperbauer for Ohio. Kasperbauer, you know, one of the better hitters for Ohio. Right now, in 10 games, he's batting just under 500-471. And that is, that, that's just impressive. If he continues that rate, I imagine he's going to win some awards. But still the young season. He's swung a great bat so far this year for Ohio. Has had a couple good days, or good games on Saturday against NIU. He takes the first pitch on the inside corner for a called strike. Nothing in one. But overall on Saturday, he had three hits, three for seven. Scored a couple of runs. And like Andrew said, Batting a whopping 471. He rips that pitch out into right field. It will fall in on a one hopper picked up by Billups. Rounding the bag at first base is Casper Bauer, and he'll stay right there with a two out single. As now that will give a chance for the catcher, Mason Minzy, to get in that bat with two outs in the bottom of the first. And you never know what can happen with two outs. Just get up yourself a base runner and try to work your way from there. As Minzy comes on, I mean, he's a 234 hitter. Yeah, you never know what he can do. He's got seven doubles on the season. That's a team high. Maybe he knocks in a double here, and they end up scoring Casterbauer. Menzi has been the starting catcher throughout most of the season for the Bobcats on base percentage, just over 300 at 302. As he bats from the left side, Heiner will now have to work out of the stretch for the first time in the game. Decent lead there for Casterbauer off of first base. From the stretch, that pitch misses high outside. Easy take there for Menzi. And he's up in the count, 1-0. And, oh. and this is where you, a young young pitcher, all right, you had two outs. You just let a guy on. You, you, you can't afford, if you're Marshall here, to kind of keep this two-out rally going. Casper Brower extending his lead over there at first base. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. That one misses just outside. Good take there from Minzy. And he'll be well ahead in the count, 2-0. and oh. Yeah, the, the catcher there tried to. Try to use a frame job, but the official, or the umpire, sorry, still transitioning from basketball, the umpire was not fooled at all. 2-0 delivery, coming into Minzy, swings and lines it out into left field, coming into left fielder, and he reaches out to make the grab on the run, as that is Williams out there. So despite the two-out hit, Ohio unable to score a run. one nothing Marshall heading into the top of the second. Located on 741 East State Street, Steak and Shake is serving up handmade milkshakes, fresh pressed steak burgers, and crispy shoestring fries cooked right to order. Kick off your day with our breakfast served until 11 a.m. And don't forget to join us for happy hour drinks and shakes on weekdays from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. Left corner for three, bang! And oh baby, what a first half it's been. In sight, it must be right. We'll see you there at Steak and Shake Athens. If you can dream it, you can do it. 
Maybe your dream is to have a vacation cabin in the woods. Or maybe your dream is to open up a cat cafe. Uh, who ordered the milk? At Ohio University Credit Union, your dreams are our dreams, and we have the money to lend that will make them a reality. OUCU offers great loan rates, flexible terms, and fast responses on your application. Not a member? You can join. Really, stop by a branch or visit OUCU.org. Equal housing opportunity, loan subject to credit approval, federally insured by NCUA, MLS number 433-809. to inning number two as we saw a couple hits coming from both sides. Bat swinging early and often for both these teams so far in the ball game. Nice crowd here at Bob Wren Stadium. It's a great day out. Hard to believe we had a game canceled on Sunday, Andrew, due to snow just a few days ago as you don't see a single flake out there on the field here this afternoon. Yeah, no, it's a uh the weather here is absolutely crazy. I'll never understand it, but I'll take doing a broadcast in shorts after being in a heavy jacket on a Sunday. I'll, I'll take that any day of the week. Ready here to start. The top of the second inning will be Schaefer, Billups, and Leon all due up for Marshall. 7-8-9 as they look to build on their one nothing lead. Rhoda remains on the mound for Ohio as he just threw 12 pitches in that first inning. Squaring the bunt is the batter, Schaefer, and he gets it down, but it'll roll foul up the third baseline and gets touched there by Casper Bauer as that'll put Rotor up in the count, nothing and one. If you're Rotor here, you really need to get at least two of the next three batters because you don't want to put them at the top of the lineup with one or two guys on. You, you don't want to put them back at the top of that. You kind of survived that first inning only giving up one run. You'd like to get out of this one quickly. Second pitch to Schaefer will miss low and inside for a ball. He was up to count at one apiece. As Schaefer doing the catching duties for Marshall in this game. The starting catcher usually is Leach, who's DHing in the game. Schaefer batting 258 on the season. First pitch swung on and popped foul and out of play over top the third base dugout. As I'll put Roeder up in the count, one and two. Roeder hasn't got a lot of swing and misses so far in this game, but he has been putting the ball over the plate and allowing his defense to make plays behind him early on. From the windup, the one-two pitch home. Swing and a miss, strike three. There you go, you called it. He Roeder said he hadn't got it. Got him on the high fastball there for his first punch out of the game. Leadoff batter retired in the top of the second. That'll bring up Jordan Billups, the right fielder for Marshall. And that was a that was a big first out there. You got Billups though. He's third on the team in batting average, 328. So it's not really like he's a true eight hole hitter. Like we mentioned, a very talented lineup for Marshall. First pitch of Billups swung on, grounded back up the box, just past short and out into center field for a base hit. As Peterson will fire it back into the infield, a one out single for Billups. Very similar start as to the top of the first inning. First batter retired, followed up by a first pitch single for Marshall. All right, so you got the nine-hole hitter. I said you needed to get two out of the first three, and he still got himself a chance to do that here with the nine-hole hitter up. Eddie Leon hasn't started in too many games this year, just his fourth as he digs in to the right-handed box. Rotor out of the windup. Now a quick check over to first, diving back in safely with no tag is Billups. Leon just ten at-bats, two hits so far in the season. Phillips has stolen two bases on the year, two out of three. He's got a pretty good lead over there first. First pitch in, chopped over to third. Casper Bauer field throw on to second for one. Turn over to first. Not quite in time as Leon able to beat out the double play, but nice job there from Casper Bauer to field that high hopper and make a strong delivery to second to get the lead runner. Yeah, because if he doesn't do that quick enough, you know, you're sitting there instead of trying to turn two, you got a runner on first and second. And Steady does a nice job, like you said, throwing over to second, make sure that they at least get the fielder's choice. Now two away, and you, you did what you needed to do if you're Ohio. You got the first two before they get back to the top of the lineup. Yeah, another one pitch at bat there for Rotary. He's only at 18 so far in the game. Lineup turns over. Luke Edwards digs in with two outs. Runner still on first base. Runner goes first pitch. Edwards swings and lines it foul down the right field line while at a play to make the count 0-1. Edwards, I mean, he, he was 0-1 the last time. He certainly looking to try to keep this two-out rally going, but still no hesitation from the top of this martial order. Just green light, swing whenever you want. 
Yeah, Leon got a pretty good jump over there at first. He probably would have been safe had the pitch got taken. Absolutely. By Edwards. As he's dancing around this time, they'll keep him honest over there. Dives back into first base safely. Roeder now back on the rubber, standing on the right side of it from our vantage point. Oh, one one pitch. Got him Ooh. leaning. Good check over to first, and they say he just got back in. He left the bag. As that's what I think Baker's arguing with the umpire. As you saw Casper Bauer and Roeder both started trotting off the field as they definitely had Leon leading over there off of first base. I think what he's saying is, listen, you get, didn't get the tag in time the first time, and then when he did leave the bag, Baker was not touching the bag or touching the runner, so I think he still is safe even though he left the bag. Count remains 0-1-1 with two outs, top two, one nothing. Marshall lead, runner on first. Roeder, another check on the runner. That's three in a row now. You see Leon's lead. He's gotten a little bit tighter since the first couple pitches of the at-bat. Yeah, the close call will do that. That's exactly what a close call will do. It'll keep you more honest. Roeder still has to get the batter out here. As he'll come home with this one, the 0-1 pitch, cut on and missed. Nice location there on the outside part. It's actually got tipped into the glove of the catcher. But now Roeder way ahead, nothing in two with two away. Trying to get just his second strike out of the game. Second one in this inning, too. Roeder delivers. Actually, another pickoff attempt over the first Baker, not even tagging this time. As they're just... Trying to keep Leon from getting in the scoring position, especially on a hit and run with two strikes as he'll be going on contact anyway. The 0-2 pitch home runner takes off. Pitch lined out into center field. Moving back to his left is a center fielder, Peterson, and he'll make the grab on the run in the alley to end the inning. One hit, one left on, no runs for Marshall. They lead at 1-0, heading the bottom to second Ohio, coming back up to hit. When you order your groceries online with ClickList from Kroger, you can do your shopping anytime, anywhere, like the gym, the office, or your favorite comfy couch. And whether you place your order on your phone, tablet, or computer, it's still your neighborhood Kroger. So you'll find all the fresh choices, low prices, and great deals you love. And you'll save time, too. Try ClickList from Kroger with same-day pickup. Check it out at Kroger.com. Fresh food, low prices at Kroger. These days, we're all doing a lot more virtually, which is why at Ohio Health, we've expanded our virtual care options and availability to make it even easier to get safe expert care at home. That includes virtual visits with over a thousand trusted providers in every medical specialty. Learn more about our virtual health options at ohiohealth.com slash virtual health. Let's go Cats. Let's go Labatt Blue Light. When you drink a pristine Canadian Pilsner, you're good at beer. Bobcats fans, grab a Labatt Blue Light and be good at beer. Always enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2021 Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All rights reserved. Labatt, registered U.S. trademark of Labatt Brewing Company, LTD. Five, six, and seven do up for the Bobcats as they try to crack the scoreboard here in this second inning. Marshall out to an early one nothing lead on the Bobcats. Heiner still on the rubber for Marshall. His first pitch of the inning, and kind of an excuse me squint swing there from Spencer Harbert, who leads off the inning for Ohio as he falls behind in the count. Nothing in one. Harbert batting on the year just 219. Making his ninth start on the season in 32 at-bats as that pitch catches the outside corner. Nice location there from Heiner. And he's quickly up in the count, nothing in two. And danger of getting his 11th strikeout as well. Heiner from the windup, the 0-2 delivery. Misses low and outside for a ball, one and two. All right, all right. Good eye there. Watch that one go off the plate. Battle yourself back. Try to find a way to get on base. The 1-2 pitch. Harbert cuts, cuts on it and misses for the swinging strikeout. First K of the game for Heiner, and the leadoff batter for the Bobcats is retired in the bottom half of the second. Yeah, I mean, the scoreboard may read 1-0, but Marshall has dominated offensively with 
base runners and I mean Ohio just only one runner so far and they've only had four batters five batters still there in the game Harrison Johnson the DH he cuts at the first pitch high fly ball left side of the outfield moving over is the center fielder Edwards he'll catch it in the left center field gap calling off the left fielder and a quick couple of outs for Heiner here in this second inning that'll bring up the first baseman Cale Baker yeah, Baker transferred in from Ole Miss struggling a little bit or in the early part of the season under 100 batting average just three hits and 32 appearances we'll have to pick up one here to try to keep this second inning alive as he digs into the right-handed box first pitch from Heiner breaking ball misses just a bit up stairs for a ball 1-0 very efficient Heiner has been so far just 14 pitches so far in an inning and two-thirds Second pitch from Heiner, swung on and a little bit behind that one as he fouls it over the first base dugout and out of play over towards OSF as the Ohio softball team has a game against Marshall later on as well. Yeah, it looks like they're still warming up over there. As you can see the field from our vantage point. 1-1 one, one pitch, Baker grounds it over to third, fielded on a hop, long throw over to first in plenty of time to retire the side. No runs, no hits, nobody left for the Bobcats. Three up, three down. 1-0 Marshall heading into the top of the third. We've all seen the tragedies associated with drug activity and impaired driving in our state. This is Trooper Conkler of the High State Highway Patrol's Athens Post. We need everyone's help to keep drugs out of our communities, keep impaired drivers off our roads, and get people to make good decisions when driving. Traffic and community safety is the responsibility of everyone. You can do your part in calling pound 677 to report drug activity and impaired or reckless drivers to law enforcement. Together we can make Ohio a safer place to live and travel. Let O'Neill Hartman Insurance show you how Grange's strong value and fast claim service delivers league-leading coverage. O'Neill Hartman Insurance will find you a Grange auto policy that balances competitive rates and a responsive Grange claim service. O'Neill Hartman Insurance considers Grange their go-to company for their combination of great value and outstanding claim service. Call O'Neill Hartman at 740-797-4685 or visit them online at O'NeillHartman.com. You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. The past year and a half, we've all been part of unprecedented times that have been heavy. At Integrated Services for Behavioral Health, we have been here for you throughout the heaviness of the pandemic and will continue to be here for you whenever you need us. Checking in on your behavioral health and well-being is more important than ever. If you feel like you can benefit from home or community-based support, counseling, peer recovery support, and a myriad of other services we offer, please call us at 800-321-8293. We're here for you. 1-0 lead for Marshall, and it looks like a pitching change will be made for the Bobcats. As out there on the mound, that looks like that's 32. Hudson Bockle, that's just two innings pitched for Brendan Roeder as he gave up one earned run on four hits and one strikeout in two innings pitch. First pitch from Bockle comes right down Main Street, taken for a called strike. Nothing and one into the leadoff batter for Marshall, Christian Lucio, as he doubled and came around to score the game's only run his last time up. Oh, one pitch, misses outside for a ball, evens up the count at one apiece. And Bunkle is uh, just a freshman from California. I'm sure he wasn't used to the snow that we had this past weekend. One, one pitch, bounces in the turf and blocked by the catcher, taken for a ball, two and one. Bonkel limited appearances on the year so far. This is just his fourth at 13.5 ERA, so he's going to want to work on getting that down in the game this afternoon. Pitch swung on the line down the third baseline and just inside the left field line for a fair ball. Lucio turns and heads into second base, and he will stop there with his second double and as many at-bats and a leadoff man in scoring position for the Thundering Herd here on the top of the third. 
No, not certainly not the start you would want. Just Lucius was able to able to get a hold of that ball, get it down just barely fair. And I mean, now you, you're sitting there as a freshman. You got a man on second, no outs. You got to do everything you can to try to get this batter. It'll be a tough batter to get. Cole Williams singled up the middle and drove in an RBI in his first at bat. As Bonko now steps off the rubber to keep Lucio close at second base. Bonko comes set. Delivers the first pitch. And a nice breaking ball. Cuts right over the heart of the plate for a called strike. Nothing in one. Ball had some nice movement on it. You don't see Marshall batters taking too many of those. Maybe it was the breaking ball that threw Williams off a little bit on the first pitch. 0-1 delivery from Bockle. That one misses just off the outside part of the plate for a ball. Good spot there from the freshman, but didn't get the call. Evens up the count at one apiece. Right now trying to paint the corners. I mean, the breaking ball still just, I mean, it didn't necessarily go right down the middle. Caught the edge of the plate there on the first pitch. Second time he misses it, he's, he's trying to avoid right down the heart here. The 1-1 delivery. This one will catch at the letters for a called strike. Williams looked like he thought that one was a little high. But Bonkle gets the call. Now he's ahead in the count. 1-2 and two with a runner on second base. No outs in the top of the third. 1-0 lead for the Thundering Herd. In this game, that's just the one-off. These two teams do play again later on in the season, but not a series in the middle of the week. 1-2 pitch from Bonkle. Swung on and popped foul out of play over top the press box. So Williams will get to see another one and two pitch. Have not seen a lot of swings and misses from the Thundering Herd so far in this game. The only one that comes to mind is the one from Schaefer earlier on on the strikeout. Yeah, I believe that's the only one. I believe that's the only strikeout that Ohio's gotten in this game, which is rare because Marshall, they've struck it out a decent bit of times. One, two, runner goes on the pitch, swung and fouled it. Over top the third base dugout was Williams. That was a pretty good jump from Lucio there at second base. That it was. I mean, again, if even if that hadn't been contact made, if they just would have taken the pitch, I believe he would have been safe at third. Yeah, Lucio does have six stolen bases on the year, six out of eight so far. Runner remains at second, one-two count, nobody out. Bonkle pauses. Now will come home with the pitch. Swung in line, deep out into right field. Moving back is the right fielder in the alley. Reaches up and makes the grab. That's A.J. Roush on the catch. Gets the ball into the infield. Runner tags up and heads over to third base. That's a good swing on the ball there from Williams, but Roush got a good beat on it out there, and they're able to get the out. One away, runner on third base for the cleanup batter, Ryan Leach. Yeah, Leach got a chance to pick up his first RBI of the game, and... Knock Lucio in for the second time today and put Marshall up. But, I mean, if you're Ohio here, you're looking again for a strikeout. Leach did single out in the left field his first time up. First pitch from Bockle, swung on and foul, popped high in the air down the right field line. Roush on his horse heading into foul territory, but he was unable to get there in time as the ball bounces just in front of the short wall out there in the right field foul ground. It'll be an 0-1 count. He may have been better off to let that one go like rather said, than catch it. That's one of those that's in between because if he makes a catch, it's going to be a really tough throw to get the runner out from third, as you would assume Lucio would probably have tagged there. Especially with the speed that he has. I don't think he would have been able to get him out. So, again, a better, probably better for Ohio that that ball landed. Monko now ahead, nothing in one in the count. Marshall trying to add on to their one-run lead. Here comes a pitch, swing and a miss from Leash. Good spot there from the freshman pitcher as he's now well ahead in the count, nothing in two. And this could be a big strikeout if he gets it. And Leach, I mean, he's struck out 14 times this season, so it's not uncommon. Infield at normal depth for Ohio, despite the runner on third. 0-2 pitch, misses up high. They're just trying to get him to chase. Good take there from the batter, Leash. If you can... Get yourself out of this as a freshman and, and kind of just work your way back. That's got to be a big confidence boost right now. Leach out of the stretch. One-two pitch home. That one misses outside. You can see trying to be careful to Leach here. As we mentioned, team leader in RBIs and home runs coming into this game. 
for yeah. Marshall, slugging at 570 on the season. You'll take that from your cleanup bat. Yes, you will every time. He was the solo for doubles, but now Lucio and him are tied at seven. 2-2 two -two pitch home. Swung on and missed. Big strike out there for Bonkel to get the second out of the inning. And now it'll take a two-out base hit from Sankovic to add another run in for the Thundering Herd. Sankovic, a 302 batter. I mean, he can do it. Nine. There he has eight RBIs. He's looking for his ninth right now. But Bonkel has got to be feeling pretty good about himself right now after that last strikeout. Yeah, for Bonkel on the season. That's just the second strikeout that he's gotten. Run remains at third with two away in the top of the third. Breaking ball misses upstairs for a ball 1-0, and and it looked like Lucio got the attention of Bonkel off a of third base there. You saw him kind of trot down pretty fast there off a of third base. Yeah, maybe just trying to get a Bach or something, send him along. Sankovic flew out to left field and is only at bat so far. That one line back up the middle. Look what I found. Bonkel makes the snag <laughs> with the glove to get out of the inning with the runner on third base. No runs, one hit, one left on. What a play from Bonkel. Ohio still trails 1-0 heading to the bottom of the third. Bobcat fans, the Hugh White Family of Dealerships is your hometown Athens dealer. And to show our commitment to the community, we're offering free car washes for Ohio University students and faculty, as well as college grad discounts with all of our new brands. But that's not all. We provide free concierge service for faculty. We'll pick up your vehicle and drop it back off after service. Take advantage of our leases in under $200 per month. Come visit us on North Columbus Road, less than five minutes from campus or online at visithughwhite.com. And remember, if the deal is right, it must be Hugh White. Whether you're coming to Athens to root on the Bobcats, visiting friends and family, or just in town for business, the Hampton Inn in Athens wants to be your home away from home. With 86 sparkling rooms, complimentary high-speed internet, hot breakfast served each morning, and a spa and business center, you can expect a great night's stay with service that will bring you back. Visit us on the web at HamptonInn.com. That's HamptonInn.com. And go Bobcats! And one due up for Ohio in this bottom of the third inning as they look to scratch across a run. As they trail 1-0 to Marshall. Only one hit so far for the Bobcats. A.J. Roush, Nick Dolan, and Isaiah Peterson back to the top. As it's been four straight Bobcats retired by the starting pitcher Heiner for Marshall. Just one hit so far through for the Bobcats, but they're still hanging around. Just down one. So A.J. Roush will dig in, takes the first pitch strike on the outside corner, nothing in one. It's been an efficient start for Heiner as well. Only 16 pitches so far in two-plus innings. He'll take that any day from your pitcher. 0-1 pitch lined out into right field from Roush. Backing up is Billups, and he'll make the one-handed snag right around the ear for the first out as Roush put a good swing on that one but unable to find a gap. As I'll bring up the nine-hole batter, Nick Dolan. Dolan not seeing a lot of action. I mean, he's just batting 200. He's only playing eight of the 12 games. So he's still trying to find his footing right now. First pitch from Heiner into Dolan. Takes a big swing at it, but unable to make contact. He's down in the count 0-1. It's the first time these two teams have gotten together since 2020 where Ohio knocked off Marshall but didn't meet in the non-conference schedule last year. The 0-1 pitch misses low and inside for a ball, 1-1. One and one. It's surprising with uh, COVID last year. You would have thought teams that close probably would have went on to play each other. But Yeah, you would have thought, thought so, especially like you said, they're that close. They're rivals already. 1-1 one, one pitch, pop foul over the first base dugout as that put stolen behind in the count, 1-2. and two. Oh, we got a little uh, crowd music now going on. First time we've heard that throughout the game. Sizable crowd, too. Yeah, a great day here in Athens. Probably just a tick below 70 degrees. A little wind blowing. 1-2 pitch. Dolan slow chopper up the third baseline. It'll go foul. So we'll get to see another 1-2 and two pitch. 
You just got to keep battling them off, fouling them off until you get the pitch you like. And hopefully that's what Dolan's doing here. Hunter shakes off the first sign, now gets one he likes. One two pitch home to Dolan, and again, he's grounded foul towards the third base coaching box. The ball trickles out into left field. Yeah, now win to play. And it's going to be the bullpen's duty. Oh, no, nope, they send from the bench. Oh, now they go from the bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he'll just finish his run all the way out to the bullpen now after <laughs> going to get the ball. So it looks like, not sure exactly who that is. One two pitch to Dolan. Misses a bit upstairs and outside. Good take there from the shortstop to even up the count at two and two. Smart at bat right now. Way to lay that one off. Did break a little bit, but frame job wasn't good enough from the catcher. The 2-2 two -two pitch, Hunter working fast, cut on and miss. He chased the high fastball and actually got a piece of it back into the glove of the catcher, Schaefer. But that's a strikeout for Heiner. His second in the ball game. Lineup turns over to Isaiah Peterson with two away here in the bottom of the third inning, a 1-0 Marshall lead as Heiner starting to find a groove a bit. Came in struggling on the year with a 7 ERA, but he's retired the last six Bobcats. And Peterson's only faced one of his pitches so far, and he sent it to about as far back as the warning track as you can get without it being gone. That he did. He takes the first pitch on the outside corner for a called strike. Nothing in one. Well, yeah, it looked like Peterson was going to have a leadoff first pitch homer, but the ball died out the track. This one gets a jam shot over to shortstop, picked up off the ground, and a strong throw over to first. Retires Peterson. Three up, three down inning for Ohio. Nobody on base as we cruise along into the top of the fourth. one nothing lead for the Thundering Herd. If you're traveling to a game, a weekend road trip, or just around town, you need to stop at GoMart. You'll find a GoMart open 24 hours a day right off the interstate or right off Main Street in your local community. You can refuel your ride with quality gasoline and also yourself with popular snacks, drinks, and more. We're making it easy to keep up with your busy schedule by keeping you on the go. GoMart is the proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat football. Go for good times. Jumpstart your day. Top of the fourth, about to get underway. One nothing lead for Marshall over Ohio, and we'll throw the play-by-play. -play. Duties over to my partner Andrew Allison. Yeah, so far Ohio done a decent job defensively. They, they worked themselves in a jam there for in, in this game. I mean, they're only up. We're only down one nothing. It looks like we're going to have a new pitcher out there on the mound for Ohio as well. Looks like it's number 23. I'm sorry, it is 22 rather. Zach Weber. Hard to see when they don't really ever show their back to this side of the field. But it's Zach Weber. I mean, just making his third appearance. He's gone three innings, gave up two hits, two strikeouts, two walks, and 11 batters face. So has not allowed. A run to come across the plate yet, though, Joey. Yeah, and you see, it, you think that extra day off on Sunday, you know, really allow Ohio to be flexible with their pitching options. Already the third pitcher they've used, and maybe a tactic to kind of throw off these Marshall bats, not allow them to time up one pitcher, as both pitchers really did a solid job so far for Ohio. Uh, Bonkle did a great job not giving up a run in that third inning with the runner on third base and one out. And uh, it was a decent start from Roeder as well. He threw a lot of strikes as Marshall was really timing him up, putting the ball in play. Now we'll see what Weber's able to do against this lineup. Yeah, I'll bring up Sorensi, who's 0 for 1 on the day. He did leave two runners stranded on his last at-bat, but that won't be the case as this is the beginning of the inning. First pitch hit and towards the third base line where he is retired with a great throw by the third baseman there, Kasperger, to Baker at first, and that's a one-pitch out there for Ohio, and that's going to bring up the catcher. Schaefer, 0 for 1 with a strikeout to his credit. Yeah, what a great way to settle into the game. You know, you get a, maybe a little nervous out there, but you get one pitch, one out, and you're settling real quickly. Here's Weber with the pitch. That's on the outside. That's going to be ball 1. 1-0 one -oh count, one out, no one on. Marshall has the lead here in the top of the fourth inning. Weber rocks. Next pitch right 
down Broadway, even to count at 1-1. Yeah, and with how aggressive this Marshall lineup has been so far in the game, you're shocked to not see Schaefer taking a cup cut at that pitch. Very much so, as here is the 1-1 pitch, and that's going to be low and outside. It's going to be ball two there from Weber. And Marshall, I mean, they've only scored one run, but they've been on fire offensively. Five hits so far through three innings. 2-1 pitch on the way. That's going to be fouled back and out of play. So it's going to be 2-2 count now yeah, for Schaefer. Despite how good the lineup is coming in, we mentioned batting just below 300 on the year. These Ohio pitchers haven't been afraid. They've been attacking the strike zone throughout this first part of the game. Yeah, they've been, they've been just putting it there and trusting their defense. And it's worked for them so far. Weber. Looking for the pitch. Here's the 2-2 on the way to Schaefer. That's going to be swung on and hit into left field. Going back is the fielder. He's going to stop. Watch that hit it off the wall. Still can't find it. The runner is standing at second, and that is where he's going to stop. So a two-strike hit, and it's actually going to be a double there for Schaefer. His first hit of the game, and that's going to put one out and a man on second for the eight-hole hitter, Billups. Yeah, they were trying to get him to chase that high fastball like they got on the strikeout of Leach last inning, but it just stayed a little bit too much in the strike zone. Schaefer got around on it, and I thought he dro drove it out of the ballpark there for a second. Hits high off the wall out there, and Marshall, like they had most of the game, already with a runner in scoring position here in the fourth. Yeah, the way Harvard stopped there in left field, I thought that ball was gone, but stayed in play. Now a runner on second, one out there for Billups, who is one for one on the day. Weber look, takes a look at second, then throws the pitch high and inside. Ball one, 1-0 one -oh count. Ohio in a familiar situation with the runner in scoring position and just one out. Weber, again, taking a long look at second base. And the 1-0 pitch is on the way. That's going to be swung and hit towards the second baseman where he'll easily flip that one over to Baker at first. And there's two away, but the runner does advance. A great job by Funderburg there to just make the easy play, get the out. And two away, a runner on third for the Thundering Herd. And they've got the nine-hole hitter, Leon. The third baseman, who was 0 for 1. Yeah, great job playing the position there from Funderburg. Obviously, he's holding the runner with the right-handed batter, but he's able to get back over there, field it cleanly, and make a good throw on the first to get a big second out. Weber with the first pitch on the way to Leon, and that's going to be high ball. 1-1-0 one, one, oh count. Two outs, a runner on third. For Marshall, has a one nothing lead here in the top of the fourth inning. Leon back in the box, and now Weber gets set. 1-0 on the way. That's going to be swung on and missed. Strike one. Counts even at one. And Weber looking to get himself out of the inning. The freshman righty gets set. 1-1 one, one on the way. And that is going to catch that outside corner. 1-2. He's a strike away from getting himself out of the inning here. The Lebanon, Ohio native. Yeah, it's a great spot there on a 1-1 pitch. Low outside corner batter. Can't do too much with it unless he's willing to take it the other way. 1-2 on the way. Inside, and that is going to make it 2-2. And you can tell the Ohio crowd here, the many of them that there are, not too happy about that. Whoever taking a long look, looking for the sign. Gets set. Here's the 2-2. And that is going to miss outside. Now a full count, a great job there by Leon to kind of battle himself back, make sure he didn't swing at any bad pitches, and now he's got himself a payoff pitch due up. Yeah, first full count we've seen on either side. As both teams have been swinging the bats really early, but Leon making Weber work for this final out of the inning. Here's the 3-2 on the way. It's going to be swung on and hit towards the shortstop. No, the third baseman's going to grab it, throw to first, and Baker kept his foot on the bag. That'll be out number three. So one left stranded there for the Thundering Herd, but they still have a 1-0 lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. At the Fairfield Inn and Suites in Athens, enjoy complimentary hot breakfast, then unwind on our beautiful outdoor patio, which includes a gas fire pit and barbecue grill. Conveniently located on East State Street, just a short drive from the Ohio University campus and uptown Athens, the Fairfield Inn and Suites is situated near many shopping and dining venues. At the Fairfield Inn and Suites, you're our number one priority. Call 740-589-5839 to book your next visit to Athens or find us online at fairfieldinn.com. Hi, this is Jared Dean with Dean Heating and Cooling. 
As your local Tempstar dealer, you can experience superior home comfort with Tempstar game-changing technology. Whether you need a fall tune-up or a midwinter repair call, our expert technicians will make sure your heating system is running at peak performance. Count on Dean Heating and Cooling and Tempstar to keep you cozy all winter long. Find us online at deanheatingandcooling.com and go Cats! Welcome back into Bob Wren Stadium, bottom of the fourth inning. About to get underway here. Heiner still on the mound for the Thundering Herd for the Bobcats. It's going to be Thunderbird, Kassbarger, and Menzi for them. And they're still looking to get their first run on the board. Right now they trail 1-0 in the score category, but 6-1 in the hit category, Joey. Yeah, and it just feels like if Ohio's going to hang around in this game throughout, they're going to have to start scoring some runs. And they, they got the, the – better part of the lineup to do it. 2-3-4 coming up. But Marshall, they've already had five runners left on base in these first four innings. So it just feels like at some point the dam might come open. So Ohio's going to have to try to get some runs here in this inning. But give credit to Heiner. He's pumped the strike zone and just kept these hitters off balance early and often in this game. And that will bring up Funderburg, who is 0-4-1 on the afternoon. As he approaches the plate, Ohio, like Joey said, they're going to need to start scoring some runs because it feels like the floodgates are eventually going to open here for the Thundering Herd. Funderburg just a 167 batter. Heiner gets set, and here goes the first pitch of the inning, and that is hit right to the third baseman and the throw to first in time. So one pitch, one out there for Heiner, and that was a great job there by Leon. Uh, just kind of come up, play that ball, and retire Funderburg. Yeah, high chopper. You know, sometimes third baseman get charged in on that one, and then it ends up playing them, bouncing over their head, but he did the right thing. Sitting back, letting it come to him, and then feeling it cleanly, had plenty of time to make a good, strong throw over to first as Casper Bauer digs in now with the only hit for the Bobcats so far. Man only, the man responsible for that lone one is at the plate, one out, shows bunt, and then pulls it back, but it's a strike anyway. And maybe he was just trying to get the third baseman to play up a little bit so he can hit it over his head. Yeah, Leon was ready to pounce on that one. He was about halfway down the third baseline at the time the ball was crossing the plate. Oh, one on the way. That third baseman standing right at the edge of the infield. Oh, one outside there from Heiner. And the count will be even at one there for Kassbarger. Heiner taking a long time to find this pitch. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's going to be swung on and hit down the first baseline, but just on the wrong side of the bag. And thankfully for Ohio, it was. It's 1-2 count. Otherwise, it would have been an easy out. Yeah, and that's one of those, if he's playing even with the bag, he might be able to take a step in, field it in fair play. But their first base is playing all the way back, almost an outfield grass. So a lot of space there. Casper Bauer allows him to get another chance to try to turn one fair here. Caster Bauer has now the almost all the infield except the third baseman standing on the outfield grass. Has the one-two pitch on the way to him, and Caster Bauer will let that one go out of, or sorry, on the inside of the plate and be a two-two count. It has been a great year for him so far. 471 coming in to the game, a couple extra base hits, as they're going to need him to try to spark a rally here for the Bobcats in this fourth inning. As there's another one or another two-two pitch that is. Hit foul down the first baseline and out of play. He's, he's doing a great job battling up there. I mentioned he's having a great year. Trying to just jumpstart this Bobcat offense as we're approaching the midway points of the game. Heiner shakes his head, now goes with the 2-2. That's a swing and a miss, and that's going to be strike three out number two as they sling the ball around the infield for the strikeout. And that is going to be two away and no one on now as it'll bring up Menzi. Yeah, it's one of those two strikes. Your eyes really light up. You see it at the eyes. But a good spot there from Heiner. Threw it just above the letters and inside. Tough for Casper Bauer to get his hands inside the ball there to make contact. Swings underneath it. And Heiner gets his third strike out of the game. And that'll bring up Menzi. 0 for 1 is the catcher. First pitch on the way to him and... That'll miss low. Ball 1-1-0 one, one, oh count. Two outs and no one on. Marshall has the lead 1-0 here in the bottom of the fourth inning from Bob Wren Stadium. 
Yeah, Minzy made good contact in his first at-bat, just hung up a little bit to left field. As the 1-0 pitch is just going to catch that inside corner, strike one, 1-1 one, one count for the Bobcat catcher. Diana rocks with the 1-1, and it is on the outside corner. It's going to be 1-2, and he is a pitch away from back-to-back -back strikeouts. Heiner nods his head. He's got the pitch. One, two. Aye, right, ball two. Two, two count now for Menzi, the four-hole hitter. Yeah, he tried to snap off the backdoor breaking ball there, but just unable to get really on top of it. Sailed on him a bit. An easy take there for Menzi. Two, two on the way to the senior. He's going to swing on that and hit it into deep center field, but Marshall was right there to be able to catch that ball. And send us to the top of the fifth inning with the Thundering Herd still leading 1-0 over the Ohio Bobcats. Voice of the Bobcats, Russ Eisenstein, on behalf of David White Services, the largest heating and cooling dealer in Southeast Ohio. They've been the choice of thousands for over 45 years. Offering the most efficient Lennox heat pumps, air conditioners, and furnaces, David White Services can save you money on your heating and cooling bills. Thanks, Russ. I'm David White. And I'm Esther White Thomas, inviting you to call us today to schedule a free estimate for heating and cooling or a new gas fireplace. David White Services is a proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat Athletics. Okay, people, we all know what's at stake in this game. Zoe, what's at stake? Our futures. Our futures. And is anything going to keep us from achieving our goal? No way. Because what do we have? The plan. Ohio's 529 plan. Because in this family, how do we play the college savings game? Tax-free. And where do we play it? Um, I don't know, Daddy. That's okay, Pumpkin. Who want to win at college savings? Go to collegeadvantage.com slash bobcats. Top of the fifth inning. Marshall still clinging on to a 1-0 lead over Ohio here at Bob Wren Stadium. Weber is back out on the mound for his second inning of work. So far, that's about what we've seen every Ohio pitcher do. Two innings of work as Weber is the third one for the Bobcats that has touched the bump this afternoon, and that will bring up Edwards 0 for 2, the center fielder. Yeah, and everybody else at the top of the order has had a lot of success for Marshall so far in this game. I mean, all hitters, two through four, all at least have one hit, but they've gotten Edwards both times so far in the ball game. And Edwards is the leading batting average for the Thundering Herd, but he watches the first pitch go on the outside and into the other batter's box, so 1-0. No outs, no one on. Weber looking. Now he's got the pitch. 1-0 on the way and a check swing. And they're going to say he did, in fact, go around. So it's going to be a 1-1 count. As Weber did, did pretty solid after giving up the first hit, or the hit in the first batter in the last inning, looking to continue that success. 1-1 pitch outside. 2-1. Now the count to Edwards. in what has been a fast-paced game, but not necessarily on the scoreboard. The 2-1 there from Weber is going to bounce in front of the plate, so it's going to be a 3-1 count now. And we're in danger of getting our first walk of the game, Joey, for either side. Yeah, you got to think Edwards is going to be licking his chops here, 3-1, as Weber might just try to sneak one over the plate. And Weber does end up sending that ball close to the plate, but... It is fouled off, and we're due up for a payoff pitch once again. Weber steps back on the rubber, and here's the payoff pitch. Swung on and fouled back. We'll line it up. We'll do it again. Good pitch there from Weber. Got it on the outside as Edward just, just able to poke it off the end of the bat like a pull shot over towards the first base dugout. And here we go, the 3-2 on the way once more, and it is on the inside corner. Strike three, pull him a chair, put it backwards. That is going to be a strikeout there for Edwards. I don't think he was too happy about that.
but the junior from Myrtle Beach has to take a seat on the bench. No, definitely started this trot towards the first baseline, but good spot right on the black on the inside corner from Weber for his strikeout, first strikeout of the ball game. And are we getting a pitching change here, Joey? With one out, it looks yep. looks like that is the day for Weber. I mean, kid had a heck of an outing. And I'm not sure he knew he was coming out of the game after that one. But we are indeed going to have a pitching change here. So we'll throw it to a quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll have a new pitcher for you. Together is a wonderful place to be. That's why CareSource is devoted to keeping you and your family healthy and happy. We promise you not only reliable health care, but also a helping hand with whatever your family needs to succeed. It's why more moms in Ohio choose CareSource for Medicaid than all other plans combined. Things only get better when we work together. And together, there's nothing we can't do. We are one. Learn more at CareSource.com. All right, so the new pitcher for Ohio is Adam Beery. He's had just one appearance in one inning, and he walked one batter as well. So he looks to kind of get himself going again here. Didn't really have any stats, so still trying to establish himself on the young season as the freshman. And I'm still kind of interested just to see that Weber went out of the game, especially after a, a big... A big strikeout, but he also worked himself out of a jam there in the inning. But I guess at this point in the season, you just kind of see what you got out there. Yeah, it definitely just seems like a by committee type of day. This is over their fourth pitcher here in just the fifth inning of the ball game. And like I said, it could be a tactic to try to keep some guys off balance. I know Marshall does have a couple lefties coming up in the lineup. Beery, the left-handed pitcher. This must have been a matchup that the Bobcats liked here. And it's Lucio at the plate right now. Two for two, both doubles. First pitch to him on the way, and that is going to miss the inside corner. Be ball one, one out, no one on, as Marshall does lead one nothing here in the top of the fifth inning from Bob Rent. Beery, the lefty with the 1-0, and that it will catch the inside corner this time. 1-1 one, one now the count for Lucio. Yeah, Lucio giving Ohio fits so far. A couple of doubles in his two at-bats. And the 1-1 pitch on the way, and he swung. I think he also made contact with it, too. A very ugly swing, and it's 1-2 count now. Yeah, Beery's got that nice slider that he's ripped off in two of his first three pitches, breaking to the outside of a left-handed batter, and that one started on the outside part of the plate and broke, just died away from the plate to get the swing. And here's the rock. Here's the pitch. The 1-2 fouled off into the dugout of Marshall, so the junior from Chicago Heights, Illinois, Stays alive at the plate right now for Marshall. Beery back on the rubber. Lucio back in the box. Here's the one, two. And that'll miss outside just trying to get him to chase something after that. But the transfer from Florida Southwestern could not do it. Beery gets set. Two, two. Swung on, popped up, and into foul territory. And going after it there was, well, what originally was the third baseman. Instead, it was called off by him, and it was Dolan, the shortstop, that came over and was able to record the out. So two away now and a very interesting play by the infield of Ohio. Well, it looked like Casper Bauer was maybe battling the sun a little bit, trying to find the ball, and obviously that play is usually a little bit easier for the shortstop because they can turn and run. The third baseman kind of just has to backpedal. So nice job there from Dolan using that athleticism to get over there to make the play. and Took a bit of a tumble. It was a clean one, though. It was. Cole Williams now at the plate for Marshall. Two outs, no one on, and the first pitch to him is right down Broadway. Strike one, 0 one count. Yeah, and it looks like that slider that's being thrown so far by Beery is throwing off these Marshall hitters. Not that one, though. Not that one. As that one again was right down Broadway, and that one is going to go right back to the wall, and that's going to be an easy stand-up double for Williams, the third double of the afternoon for the Thundering Herd. This time it's a two-out double, though, and that will put a runner in scoring position for the designated hitter here, Leach. Yeah, just when it looked like Ohio was finally going to get that clean inning that they haven't had in the game. Cole Williams had different ideas, put a good swing on that one and drove it deep out 
into the alley in left center field for the easy stand-up double. And that is going to bring up Leach, who, like Joey mentioned, is on the Posey watch list. And this is who Marshall wants up, your leading RBI guy with two outs and a runner in scoring position. There's a rock in the first pitch on the outside corner. Strike one, 0 1 count to just the sophomore from Canada. And already, like we said, on the Posey watch list, so a great sophomore that they have. Beery takes a long look at second, now the 0 1, and that's going to be outside. Counts even at one. Marshall. Just a crack of the bat away from potentially doubling their lead. Right now it's one nothing here in the top of the fifth inning. Lefty on the mound for Ohio. Gets set, checks that runner at second. And the 1-1 one, one outside and high. 2-1 now. Marshall, they've had these situations all game. Runners in scoring position, two out. Just haven't been able to get the big hit when needed to really push this lead out against the Bobcats at this point. 2-1, no, it's going to be stepped off by Beery there. And now he's going to get set back on and make a pitch to Leach, who was taken in the 30th round by the Cincinnati Reds in 2019. 2-1 on the way. That's going to be swung on, hit foul down the third base line, and then leak back into play well after it was foul ball, though. So it'll be a 2-2 count. Two outs and a man on second. Well, the Reds could use him right now. They're pretty much selling every player that they have on the roster. <laughs> yeah, he may get called days. up. He may get called up. Beery taking a long look for the pitch. Now he checks the runner at second. 2-2 two -two on the way to Leach. Swing and a miss. Strike three, out three. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. Marshall still has a lead, one nothing. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer hip. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two mangoes. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer. IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Plan your next visit to stand up and cheer for your Ohio Bobcats in Athens County, Ohio. Visit AthensOhio.com, the best resource for where to eat, where to stay, where to shop, and where to play. Athens County is home to countless trails and outdoor activities. Enjoy mountain biking, kayaking, rock climbing, and hiking. Find your own adventure. Cruise the Hawk Hawking Adena Bikeway. Mountain bike the Bailey's Trail System. Hike trails less traveled at Stroud's Run State Park. Or ride nine thrilling motorcycle routes on Ohio's Windy Nine. We can't wait to see you in Athens County, Ohio. The road to a champion. Welcome back into the bottom of the fifth inning here at Bob Wren. Marshall leading one, nothing, and some worry, worrisome trends appearing for both sides, Joey. The Ohio Bats have yet to get going, but Marshall has yet to been able to capitalize it with runners left stranded consistently with six for the Thundering Herd. Yeah, 10 in a row. Heiner's really locked in. We mentioned it. Struggle, struggling ERA. 7 over 7 before the game started. But he's really come in and mowed down these Bobcats hitters since the first inning. Only one hit so far. And not a lot of loud contact in between that either, Andrew. As, you know, these guys are going to have to start to time him up. Because, once again, Marshall struggling to get those runners in from scoring position. But they do seem to have them inning after inning after inning. Heiner with the first pitch, and that is on the outside corner to Harbor. Harbor 0-1, and he's 0-1 for 1 with a strikeout to his name already today. And the Rock in the 0-1 is going to miss low, and it's going to be a 1-1 count now. Heiner getting set, 1-1 on the way, and that's going to be high and inside there to the red shirt senior. So he's ahead in the count, 2-1. Heiner taking a long time. Now he finally gets the pitch, 2-1, and that is whew, well outside. Yeah, and that's something we haven't, we haven't seen today. He's kept his pace up pretty quickly throughout the game, especially when he's been firing in strikes. But for some reason on this at-bat, you see a little bit of a change in pace from him. And 
lo and behold, you get a three and one count out of it. Three one on the way. That's gonna be swung on and hammered into left field. Going back is the fielder. That ball is gone. Ohio is on the board. Spencer Harbert, the red shirt senior, goes yard on left field, and we are tied at one. I mean, just put a great swing on it. Harbert did really. I mean, up 3-1, that's when you sit on it and try to get your pitch for his fourth home run of the season there, and that was a loud one, a screamer. Out there in the left field, just sneaks over the wall and perhaps the spark the Bobcats needed to get the offense going. As that snapped the streak of 10 straight batters, retired, but what a great swing there from Harbert. And that is going to bring up number nine, Harrison Johnson. The DH, who is 0 for 1 on the day, but he takes one, and he goes into deep center field. Back is the center fielder, lost it for a minute, but able to corral that one. So a home run and then a loud out by the Bobcats. Had Bob Wren rocking for about 30 seconds until they recognized that ball from Johnson did not get hit as hard as they thought it did. Yeah, hit it to the deepest part of the yard, unfortunately. If he pulled it like Harbor just did, probably would have had a better chance of sneaking over the wall, but... Plenty of room out there for Edwards to go back and make the play. But now you're seeing Ohio, perhaps. They've started to time up this Heiner kid a little bit more. Two great swings on the ball to open up this inning. And to bring up Cale Baker, the graduate senior. One out, no one on, and he takes the first pitch from Heiner outside. Ball one, 1-0 one -oh count. So the Bobcats have freshly tied the game at one. Heiner, again taking a while. Now the 1-0 on the way to the Gahanna native, and he swings at that and misses, 1-1. Baker, the transfer from Ole Miss. And Ole Miss having a heck of a season right now, too. 1-1 on the way, and that is going to catch the outside corner. 1-2 now for Baker. I believe Ole Miss, if... Not number two, I think, in the top five right now. Yeah, they're ranked up. They're having a great season, Baker. Obviously, grad student gets to come back near the area where he grew up and play baseball for an extra year. Heiner with the 1-2 pitch on the way, and that is going to miss the outside 2-2. And now he gets set on the mound once again. I don't know if it's Heiner that's taken forever or if it's the catcher that's taken forever to get the signals in, but here's the 2-2, two -two, and Baker's going to smack that one back and out of play. So it'll remain a 2-2 two -two count. No, I'm sorry, it'll be, yeah, it'll remain a 2-2 two -two count. With one out, no one on. As the sun is starting to set, you can see the shadows get a little longer here at Bobrin. As the sun is behind us, 2-2 two -two on the way. And Baker's going to smack that one and a little chopper that goes down the third base line. Foul. So back-to-back -back foul balls by Baker. Keeps the count at 2-2. Yeah, hanging in there tough. We really didn't see these long at-bats from Bobcats in these first four innings of the game, but you saw the 3-1 homer from Harvard, and now Baker in there fouling off some tough pitches. 2-2 two -two on the way, and that'll miss high. So Baker battles back, earns himself a full count here, and... I mean, if you're Heiner, this inning's just got to feel eternal compared to the last couple ones where you're throwing like nine pitches, ten pitches. Well, you got to wonder how long the leash is as well as long as the outing of the year is four innings. As the payoff pitch is high, and that'll send Baker down to first base and well, bring up A.J. Roush. Like I was saying, as long as the outing of the year is just four innings and we're working in this fifth inning here now and – You've seen the struggles, a 3-1 count that led to a homer, now a, you know, a, a seven-pitch walk on that at-bat, not having the same control he had in the first few innings. You see some stirring going on in that Marshall bullpen. So wonder how long the leash will be for Heiner here in this inning. He just walked Baker, which was the sixth walk of the season for him. Now he faces Roush. And the first pitch is going to be on the outside corner. Strike one, 0-1 count, one out, and a man on first for the Bobcat offense that has seemed to come to life here in this fifth inning. Heiner not taking a new approach while he looks at the plate. And the 0-1 is going to be on the way to the redshirt freshman. High and inside again that Roush is going to have to duck away from. 1-1, one, one, one out. And you can hear the uh, Ohio crowd starting to get into this game, Joey. 
Yeah, it almost seemed like that home run has rattled him a little bit. I mean, never came close to hitting anybody, never had deep counts, didn't have a walk in the game until this inning. But ever since that at-bat, it's been a little erratic. 1-1 one, one on the way to the pal native, and that's going to catch the outside corner. So it's a 1-2 count now. Roush going to have to try to battle. The eight-hole hitter for the Cats, standing in the box, swinging his bat, waiting for Heiner to get set. Now he does. Here's the 1-2, and that will be outside. will be even at 2. Another thing I don't think you saw the first four innings from Heiner, you didn't really see him dancing around, guys. Now you see him trying to hit spots on these two-strike pitches instead of just coming over the plate and allowing his fielders to make plays behind him. Imagine if he can't get past Roush or Dolan. I'm going to say he's probably done. 2-2 two -two on the way. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And Roush will strike out. It'll be the fourth Bobcat to do so. And that will bring up Dolan, the nine-hole hitter, who is 0-for-1 with a strikeout to his credit. He's got two outs and Cale Baker standing on first. Yeah, that's a rebound he needed. Good job getting the swing and miss there for Heiner on Roush. And now, you know, I don't think Baker's the swiftest of foot over there at first base, so don't expect to see a runner in motion here. But we'll see if Dolan can do with this at-bat, try to keep this inning going. If you can get two runners on and then turn the lineup back over to your best hitter average-wise in Peterson, perhaps they can spark a two-out rally here. And Dolan's just going to get a piece of that. It's going to go into shallow center field where that will be easily caught there by Edwards. And that will end the inning. But the Bobcats do tie it up on a solo shot. And we're tied at one going in to the sixth inning. Championship is built on years of practice and hard work. That's true in basketball and the construction industry. The apprenticeship and upgrade training programs provided by the Athens Area Union Building Trades produces the workforce with the most modern skills and cutting edge knowledge in the industry. The key to success to the Bobcats on the floor is the same as your choice on the work site. The winning move is working with members of the Athens Area Union Building Trades, proud sponsor of Ohio University Basketball. You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero when you first tasted what a burger should be like. Two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Top of the sixth inning, Ohio tied it up at the bottom of five, and we're tied up at one. That's what the score is, one all. Beery back out on the mound to do another inning of work, and he did pretty well for himself in that last inning. Yeah, that he did. Didn't let that two-out double rattle him. Came right back, got the strikeout against the best hitter on Marshall's team. And now he's got himself in a favorable spot with five, six, seven, and just feels like that home run Felt like Ohio was kind of dead in the water a little bit. Marshall just kept getting runners on, and you just felt, you know, the storm coming at some point. But they were able to weather it, never allowed that run. As Marshall is now stranded six runners on base, and they get that home run, and all of a sudden the energy has seemed to come back into the team. Sankovic at the plate right now for the Thundering Herd, and the first pitch of the inning from Beery is right down Broadway. Strike one, 0 1 count, no outs, no one on, and we are tied at one in the top of the six. Beery steps back now, though. 0-1 oh, is going to be swung on and hit into shallow left field where that will be easily tracked down and grabbed by Harbert. So one away now. And that will bring up Sorensi to the plate. One out, no one on. And he's 0 for 2 on the day as well. Beery looking for the pitch. And here it is. First one to Sorrenti of the at-bat, and that is out. Side, ball one, 1-0 one -oh count. It looks like the wind's starting to pick up a little bit as the game goes on as well. Of course, it's going to get a little cooler as the sun continues to go down. 1-0 -oh count right down Broadway. Strike 1-1-1 one, one, one with one out and no one on. That's at Ohio weather, man. You can have 70 during the day and then 35 at night. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's fun time. <laughs> one one and uh, bon attempt pulled back and the ball ended up bouncing in front of the plate. And it'll be two one. I call this. Oh, I left my jacket in the car weather because you wear your jacket outside of the car in the morning. You leave it there in the middle of the day, and then the next morning you're like, ah, I need my jacket, but yeah. it's out in the car. Then you got to sprint out to the car. Exactly. 2-1 on the way there from Beery, and that's going to catch the outside corner, much to the dismay of Sorensi, and it'll be 2-2, two, two, one out now. Well, that's a good spot on that outside corner. He's been living there, and he's been snapping off that slider with two strikes so far in the game. So we'll see if he goes right back to it here. Here is the 2-2. Two, two. That's going to be swung on and chopped towards the shortstop where that will be grabbed and thrown to first in time. Two away now, and a great job by the shortstop there, Dolan, back-to-back innings with great plays from him and that'll be two away now no one on and that'll bring up Schaefer who is one for two with a strikeout to his credit he did an awesome job not letting the ball play him there came in and charged it got it on the side hop and made a nice strong throw in plenty of time over to first base and that's a nice thing about this turf you get the nice easy hops you want to play that one instead of sitting back as the 0-1 there I'm sorry the first pitch there is swung on and fouled down the third base line and then way out of play. So it'll be 0-1. Beery taking a while to find the pitch. Now he's got it. 0-1 on the way. That's going to be swung on and popped up into left field where it'll be Harbert that just has to take about three steps sideways and catch that one for out number three. And there's the clean inning that Ohio was looking for that time. We go to the bottom of the six, still tied at one between Ohio and Marshall. At People's Bank, our vision is to be the best community bank in America. We focus on building relationships with our clients and offering cutting edge financial products. People's Bank is proud to support the local communities in which we work and live. This is Ashley Brown, People's Bank Vice President and Regional Manager, and we would love a chance to earn your business. People's Bank, Working together, building success. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Warehouse Tire in Athens is your locally owned and operated auto and truck tire center. At Warehouse Tire, we focus on customer service with a professional staff and a huge inventory of wheels and tires for a variety of applications, including farm and industrial. We feature top brands, including Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal. Warehouse Tire is also a full-service auto service shop. Let us help with all of your under-vehicle maintenance, including brakes, shocks, struts, and alignments. Visit Warehouse Tire on Hebbardsville Road in Athens or online at warehousetireinc.com. Notes playing on the PA system here as we go into the bottom of the sixth inning in Ohio in a very favorable spot. They just got some production out of the six, seven, and eight, and nine hole hitters to get them tied in this game. And now they sit there with one, two, and three, Joey. Now is the time to strike. Yeah, they got that first run last inning. Harbert hit a bomb out to left field, and you got your two top. Batting average guys coming up in first and third with Funderburg in between. So this just now feels like a time coming off their first three up, three down, anything that they've gotten on the mound. They're trying to rally and take a lead here in the bottom of the sixth. And Heiner, or Heiner still out there on the mound, surprisingly, Joey, after kind of getting roughed up there a little bit in that last inning. I mean, he, he did end up giving that run, uh, home run, and then he had a walk, so he didn't really give up a hit. But either way... He would have thought maybe that would have been the leash for him. Instead, he'll face Isaiah Peterson. Yeah, maybe if this inning you get a couple on, maybe they'll think about making a move. But overall, he's had a good pitching day besides that last inning. Only two hits overall in the game. Heiner gets set with the first pitch to Peterson. Swing and a miss. Strike one, 0 1 count. No outs, no one on. Bottom of the sixth inning. We're tied at one between the two rival schools. Even though Marshall's not in the MAC anymore, they're in the Conference USA. 0-1 oh, and another swing and a miss from Peterson. He's 0-2 right now. He's also 0-2 on the day in danger of going 0-3. Yeah, of course, Marshall just down the river in Huntington, West Virginia, not too far from here, maybe just under an hour. 0-2 oh, check swing. Did he go? They're going to look for the third baseman, and the third base umpire says he did go. So good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Isaiah Peterson, one out 
no one on. Yep, fifth strikeout for Heiner, and that's what we didn't look like last inning. Last inning he seemed a little timid to attack the strike zone, but he did there, and Peterson just out in front of the first two pitches and couldn't hold back on that one for an easy three-pitch strikeout there for Heiner. And that'll bring up Funderburg to face Heiner here, and after going three straight strikes, he misses with that one. It's ball one, 1-0 one -oh count. Funderburg, the fifth year. Waiting for his uh, one pitch, and here it is from Heiner. That's going to catch the outside corner. Strike one, 1-1 one, one count, one out, no one on. Heiner looking to respond well after giving up the lead in the last inning. Gets a 1-1 one, one pitch that'll miss low, and it'll be 2-1 now for Traven, Th uh, Traven Funderburg, rather. Funderburg getting set in the box. Heiner getting set on the rubber. Here's the 2-1. That's going to be swung on and hit towards the first baseman where it'll be immediately gloved. And running over and touching the bag was Sorensi for out number two. Yeah, and you saw a first baseman, Sorensi, playing off the bag a good bit there. So I thought that one might sneak just inside the line there for a second, but he showed some good range over there at first and easily took it over himself for the out. Yeah, like you said, I, I thought maybe it would sneak through, but it did not, and that's going to bring up Casper Bauer, the senior, with two outs, no one on. Bottom of the sixth inning. Here's the first pitch of the at-bat to Casper Bauer, and that's on the outside corner. And I'm sorry, that's going to miss the outside corner, rather. Ball one, 1-0 one -oh count, two outs. Heiner. Waiting now, the 1 0, -oh, and that is going to miss as well. It's going to be ball two. Casper Bauer from Iowa. Waiting on a 2 0 -oh pitch. Last time a Bobcat got way ahead in the count to hit a home run, and he's going to be ahead in the count 3 0 -oh now. Is Casper Bauer. One for two on the day with a strikeout to his credit. And if he strikes out on this one, that would be. Quite the feat. Heiner, 3-0 on the way. And that's going to be swung on and popped up into left field for the easy out. Swinging on a 3-0 count. And that's going to be three up, three down. For the Bobcats, we head to the seventh inning. Still tied at one. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Ohio University Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. Located on 741 East State Street, Steak and Shake is serving up handmade milkshakes, fresh pressed steak burgers, and crispy shoestring fries cooked right to order. Kick off your day with our breakfast served until 11 a.m. And don't forget to join us for happy hour drinks and shakes on weekdays from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. Left corner for three. Bang! And oh, baby, what a first half it's been. In sight, it must be right. We'll see you there at Steak and Shake Athens. If you can dream it, you can do it. Maybe your dream is to have a vacation cabin in the woods. Or maybe your dream is to open up a cat cafe. Uh, who ordered the milk? At Ohio University Credit Union, your dreams are our dreams, and we have the money to lend that will make them a reality. OUCU offers great loan rates, flexible terms, and fast responses on your application. Not a member? You can join. Really, stop by a branch or visit OUCU.org. Equal housing opportunity, loan subject to credit approval, federally insured by NCUA, MLS number 433809. Inning. I'm now going to throw it back to Joey Medor for some play-by-play -play here. Well, thank you, Andrew. A 1-1 score here in the top of the seventh. The first run of the game was scored all the way back in the top of the first inning on an RBI single from Cole Williams that played a Christian Lucio. And we were scoreless up until the bottom of the fifth. A solo shot from Spencer Harbert for the Bobcats has us even at one apiece. Ohio running their fifth pitcher of the game out there right now. They're going to throw in Eamon Horwittle, the redshirt junior, 
has yet to make an appearance this year. Last year was in five games for the Bobcats, one of them being a start, had a 12-6-6 ERA in 10 and two-thirds innings pitched with 15 runs given up as he will look to continue to limit this Marshall offense to just one run who do have seven hits along with six runners left on base, but the Bobcats have done a great job, all their pitchers throughout the game, of not letting the runners on base harm them throughout this game. That they have, and kind of been, like you said, a little bit of pitching by committee, but you kind of expect that in non-conference games. Sidearm pitch from Horwood misses high and inside for a ball, 1-0 and oh to the leadoff batter for this inning, Jordan Billups. It goes 8-9-1 and one for Marshall in this top of the seventh. Billups is 1-2 for two so far in the game. He's singled and grounded out to second in his two at-bats. 1-0 pitch from Horwood misses low and outside for a ball, 2-0. And you really need to try to get these first two batters here, get yourself some confidence before you face the top of the lineup. you got to at least get one of them. Forward old pitcher from the stretch. The right-handed pitcher kicks and side arms. 2-0 pitch, misses up high for a ball, 3-0. Walks have not been an issue for the Bobcats, but Horwood will threatening to give up the first one of the game for them and the first batter he faces. Yeah, we've only had one walk between the two squads but very much in danger of another one here. Of course, the last time we saw a 3-0 count, it was Ohio that swung on it. 3-0 delivery comes right down the middle for a called strike. Billups was definitely taken all the way there, and now he works a 3-1 count. It's so usually, I feel like, when you see a new pitcher get to a 3-0 count, you want to make him throw you a strike in yeah. that situation. Yeah, you, you got to make me swing first. You got to give me a reason to believe you're not going to throw another ball. 3-1 delivery, swung on and looped back up the middle. Diving stop by the shortstop, throw it on the first. Dug out by Baker, and they get the out. What a play there from Nick Dolan, diving up the middle. First, it looked like he was going to catch it. He was unable to, but he stuck with it, got to his feet, and delivered a strong throw over to first, and Baker digs it out. Great all-around play for the Bobcats infield to retire Billups for the first out. I'll tell you what, that's probably the third or fourth time that Dolan's made a play defensively where you just kind of been wow look, look at that play and that was by far the most impressive one yet that'll bring up Eddie Leon now he swings to the first pitch and fouls it back into the netting behind home plate nothing in one but you're right he made a great play in foul ground earlier and has played really solid at shortstop so Hordle gets some help from his infield <laughs> for the first battery faces now he's up 0-1 to the nine hole batter Eddie Leon 0-1 pitch, breaking ball, flown out into left center field, ranging over his Isaiah Peterson to his right, and he will make the catch on the run for the second out. Hortle starting to settle in after being down 3 nothing in a count early on and then used his defense there for some great plays. Lineup turns back over to Luke Edwards, the leadoff batter who plays center field for Marshall. Two outs, top seven, one apiece for both sides. The pitchers have reigned supreme. So far in this matchup, Edwards has gotten out in many different ways. He struck out, lined out the center field, and popped up to first base to open up the ball game back in the first inning. First pitch swung on and fouled out of play down towards Ohio softball field, who should be getting underway shortly for their matchup with the Thundering Herd at 6 o'clock. Yeah, it looks like they're all standing over there on the, uh, on the baseline, maybe getting ready to get announced. World will come set, 0-1 pitch, will miss just inside off the black of the plate, enough to count at one. Joe, I think if you would have told me this game would be in the seventh inning and the softball game would still have 30 minutes yet before they start, I think I would probably not believe you. This one has been cruising along here in inning number seven. 1-1 one, one pitch for Horwitzel, that one will miss outside for a ball, 2-1. Marshall comes into this game 10-6-1, and, and you might think it's weird. How the heck does a baseball team have a tie? But they're playing in a game last weekend against Merrimack, and it went into extra innings that tied at nine apiece. The lights went out. And then they had to try to move the game to Sunday, and with the snow in the area, the game got postponed as the 2-1 pitch. Big cut from Edwards, but he comes up empty, even up the count of two apiece. So, therefore, the Thundering and Herd sit at 10-6-1 on the season. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a tie in baseball before. You and I were talking about, you know, should that should that go down as a forfeit because it was their facilities that ended up failing them. But I think the NCAA was probably a little just there with just saying, yeah, it'll be a tie. 
The 2-2 pitch home misses outside for a ball. That will run the count full with two outs. Nobody on the base paths and a one-to-one -one score in the top of the seventh. Edwards, you know, he's the top hitter there for Marshall statistically. Still looking to get on base for the first time, and he's got a full count to do so. Full count pitch home. Chopped foul down the third baseline and well out of play, so we'll do it again with the count full. But Marshall trying to rebound from a loss against Ohio State where they got crushed 14-2 to on Monday afternoon. Yeah, and then they uh, they travel down 33 just a little bit, and the offense still not clicking for them. Full count pitch. Misses upstairs and inside. It will miss for ball four. Edwards draws the walk. First walk given up by an Ohio pitcher, which is impressive to think with the volume of pitchers they use, you would expect at least one person to lose a batter at some point. But no, that's the first time here in the seventh inning. And that will allow Christian Lucio to get an at-bat in this game. He does have a pair of doubles so far. If you fi figure he gets one in the gap here, it could very well score a run to give Marshall a lead. Yeah, and he's got the only RBI to this point in the game for Marshall. Ordo set, and the batter calls time right before umpire had to clear out. I'm sorry, Lucio is actually the run that came across the plate. He was not the one that had the RBI. He was the one that got knocked across. Has scored the only run of the game for the Thundering Herd. Pair of doubles so far in the game, though, two for three. Hordle comes set, peeks at the runner at first base. Now he comes home with the pitch and misses upstairs and outside for a ball, one and up. Well, this is not the time to go, go cold there if you're Wardle. You're at the top of the lineup. You got some key players for Marshall, one on – one on the bag, one on the plate, and then one in the batter's box. You need to try to find any way to just get this out and keep us tied at this inning. Edwards does have three stolen bases on the year. He is three for three. As 1-0 pitch is a called strike at the top of the strike zone. Edwards, or excuse me, Lucio, didn't look like he completely agreed with the call, but it will even up the count at one apiece. With a runner on first base, two outs, top seven, one-to-one -one score. Forward to a long look in. Gets the sign from Minzy. Will come set. Delivers the 1-1 pitch home. Big swing from Lucio, but he fouls it back into the mid of Minzy. Now Horwood a one strike away from getting out of this seventh inning unscathed. And facing a decent top-heavy lineup. Or not top-heavy lineup, but a, a decent top of this lineup as well with Marshall. 1-2, two, two outs. Horwood will Ready, comes home with the pitch. Runner takes off, line back up the box, out into center field for a base hit. Turning second and heading over to third is Williams. Lucio will stop over at first base. And a two-out single. The hit and run was on with two strikes. And that puts runners at the corners for the Thundering Herd with two outs here. And to bring up Williams, another guy that's got two hits. He's the one that has the RBI for Marshall in his great position to look like he's going to get another one, but he may not be able to get the chance to face this pitcher. Yeah, we'll see. There is an arm warming up for the bullpen for the Bobcats. It looks like there is one coming out of the pen. That he is. He will make the trot, and Horwadal will get through two-thirds of an inning, allowing a couple hits. Runners will be left on first and third. And Cole Williams coming up to bat with a 1-1 count. Although Horwood has yet to walk off the mound. And now they eventually trade balls. So pitching change, 1-1 to -one score in the top of the seventh with two outs. We'll get to the new pitcher on the other side of this quick break. When you order your groceries online with ClickList from Kroger, you can do your shopping anytime, anywhere, like the gym, the office, or your favorite comfy couch. And whether you place your order on your phone, tablet, or computer, it's still your neighborhood Kroger. So you'll find all the fresh choices, low prices, and great deals you love. And you'll save time, too. Try ClickList from Kroger with same-day pickup. Check it out at Kroger.com. Fresh food, low prices at Kroger. These days, we're all doing a lot more virtually. Which is why at Ohio Health, we've expanded our virtual care options and availability to make it even easier to get safe expert care at home. 
That includes virtual visits with over a thousand trusted providers in every medical specialty. Learn more about our virtual health options at ohiohealth.com slash virtual health. New man on the mound for the Bobcats will be the right-handed pitching at Chase Harris. As he'll be the sixth pitcher for the Bobcats to take the mound in this ball game. Harris, this will be his third appearance on the year. He has pitched five and two-thirds innings, which he holds an 11.12 ERA. Eight hits, seven runs off of Mern, two walks and five strikeouts. Opponents hitting 333 against him on the year. And Andrew, he comes into a big spot in a tie game in the seventh with runners at the corners. Big spot for the hometown kid from Alexander High School. And he's going to need, you just need to get one out here. That's what you're tasked with. Get this out. Don't allow the run. As digging into the play will be Cole Williams. He is two for three in the game with the only RBI for the Thundering Herd so far. So he'll try to give them a late lead in this one. Harris's first pitch comes right down the middle and is called strike. Minzy comes popping out of his crouch to check the runner at first base, but Lucio remains there, and it's an 0-1 count. All right, good first pitch, good first pitch. Work yourself into it here. Harris on the rubber. The 0-1 pitch misses outside for a ball, 1-1, one and, one, and Lucio, he pretty much got halfway down to second base, but didn't ever take off. Yeah, I think, I think you're trying to bait Menzi here and to try to throw down to first or throw down to second and get that runner to come across third. Well, you're definitely going to try to get him at second on the steal. Count even at one apiece with two away, top seven. Here comes a pitch. Runner fakes a takeoff and then goes back to the bag. Pitch misses high and outside for a ball two and one. A walk isn't the end of the world here because the lead run still is at third base, but then you give it up for Ryan Leach. The cleanup batter, who's had a tough day, he's one for three with two strikeouts. But you wouldn't think that'd be able to continue, especially with what we've read and heard about him. 2-1 pitch from Harris, swing and a miss from Williams. He foul tipped it into the mid, a long swing there from Williams, trying to get to that outside pitch. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two runners on in the top of the seventh inning. Williams now steps out of the box, un undoes his batting gloves and puts him back on tight. Ready to receive a 2-2 pitch from Chase Harris. Now time called in the batter's box. He's going to let Harris think about this pitch a little bit more. Probably, I mean, to this point in time, the biggest pitch of the game. Harris ready to deal. Here comes 2-2 pitch. Runner takes off. Swing and a miss ball in the dirt. Mike Manzi throws it on to first base. Or excuse me, Minzi throws it on to first base to get the drop third strike. As Harris does a great job out of the pen, getting the strikeout with a runner on third base. Two more stranded for Marshall. Game remains tied at one apiece heading into the bottom of the seventh. Let's go Cats. Let's go Labatt Blue Light. When you drink a pristine Canadian Pilsner, you're good at beer. Bobcats fans, grab a Labatt Blue Light and be good at beer. Always enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2021 Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All rights reserved. Labatt, registered U.S. trademark of Labatt Brewing Company, LTD. We've all seen the tragedies associated with drug activity and impaired driving in our state. This is Trooper Conkler of the High State Highway Patrol's Athens Post. We need everyone's help to keep drugs out of our communities, keep impaired drivers off our roads, and get people to make good decisions when driving. Traffic and community safety is the responsibility of everyone. You can do your part in calling pound 677 to report drug activity and impaired or reckless drivers to law enforcement. Together we can make Ohio a safer place to live and travel. New man on the mound for the Thundering Herd as that will put an end of the day for Chad Heiner, who had a great second start of the year. He gets through six innings pitched, just one earned run on the homer, two hits. And as well as that, he had five strikeouts. So a good outing from him. And on to replace him for the Thundering Herd. They'll bring in the right-handed three-quarters 
throwing 6'4 pitcher Nicholas Weyrich, a freshman out of Urbana High School from London, Ohio. As on the season, a 7.5 ERA for Weyrich as he's making his fifth appearance on the year. Six innings pitched, six hits, five runs all earned, four walks and six strikeouts. Four hit by pitches for Weyrich as well this year. Yeah, first team all Ohio guy last year, just a freshman like you mentioned. Comes into a big spot. Bottom of the seventh inning, still tied at one. Kind of been pitcher's ways all around. Even, even seen some kind of surprise performances from some guys who didn't have some great stats. Well, I mean, Marshall has eight hits and only the one run. That's with that last inning. They didn't have stranded eight runners on base in the ball game. With six of those being in scoring position. That is, yeah, that's not a good recipe for success at all. Middle of the order, due up for Ohio. It'll be Minzie, Harbert, and Johnson. All to face Weyrich. First pitch from Minzie. He doesn't waste any time swinging off the new arm as he fouls it over the third base dugout and out of play. 0-1 oh to the Bobcat backstop. Minzie 0-2 oh so far in the game. Couple of line outs, one to left and one to center field, respectively. Here comes the 0-1 oh pitch from Weyrich. Swung on and lined out into center field. That'll drop in front of the center fielder for a base hit. Minzie rounds the bag at first. That's where he'll stay. And for the first time in the game, the Bobcats have a leadoff runner on base, as that'll bring up Spencer Harbor, who did hit the home run his last time out for the sole RBI for the Bobcats in the game. That was the fourth home run for Harbert on the year. Does he do it again? A little bit different of a situation, but I mean, he's one for two with the strikeout. Weyrich comes set. Not a big lead over at first from Minzie. First pitch into Harbert. Bounces in the dirt. Nicely blocked there from the catcher Schaefer, but taken for a ball 1-0. and But Harbert's home run, it was a screamer over that left field wall last time out. So that was the only run given up by Heiner for Marshall in the game in his start. 1-0 pitch, bounces in the dirt, taken for a ball. That makes it a 2-0 count. Over here working himself ahead. And the last time we saw him ahead was when he hit that loud home run. He was on a 3-1 count. Right now he's got himself at 2-0. Weyrich comes set at the belt. Still not a big lead from Minzie at first. Here comes a delivery. That one catches the inside corner for a called strike. And I think he was just kind of waiting there till he got himself a strike. Now he looks down at the third base coach and tries to get the sign for what he needs to do here. Yeah, it looks like no kind of move for a sacrifice here for the Bobcats with that runner on first and nobody out. Weyrich comes home, 2-1 pitch. That one misses low and away, 3-1. and one. The count that Harbert hit his homer on last at bat. Yeah, it's starting to set up a little similar, except there's a man on third, or there's a man on first, rather, Last time, bases were empty. Weyrich has not allowed a homer so far on the year, but he has hit four batters, so he's been a little wild in his freshman year. The 3-1 pitch home, big swing from Harbor, but he gets under it and pops it foul over top the press box and out of play, so we'll see a full count. Yeah, I think he was thinking the same thing we were, Harbor, there, that, hey, I hit a home run on this count last time, took a big hack at it, just hit it up and out of, a, out of play there. Weyrich, a long look in. Big pitch here. Ohio has not had more than a single base runner on at one time all game. He had the potential to do that here. Here comes a full count pitch. It's taken low for a ball. Nice at bat there from Harvard. He works the full count and works the walk. And the Bobcats have a pair on the base pass with nobody out in the bottom of the seventh for Harrison Johnson. And it looks like the catcher there for Marshall. Schaefer is going to go out there and give some defensive signs as there's no outs and a runner on first and second. Looks like the infield is going to be staying in that double play depth now. Yeah, they're probably going to bring the corners in in case of a bunt here from Johnson. And you wouldn't think it would be a terrible move since only three hits for the Bobcats so far in the game as they'll try to manufacture a run any way they can. Squaring the bunt is Johnson. That will suck the infield in quickly. Still squaring, he gets the bunt down. First baseman picks it up, throws the third, throws it away. It's out into left field. 
coming in to score is Minzy. They'll send a second run around as it gets botched in left field. Second run in to score all the way into third base is Harrison Johnson on the sack bunt as they go for the risky play. Charging in was the third baseman, Carinci. Wild throw over to third base, allows two runs to score for the Bobcats on the error. They lead it for the first time this afternoon, three to one. Wow, what a what a play. A, a bunt gets down, and, and instead of taking the safe play at first, Marshall tries to get the lead runner, throws it away from the third baseman, rolls all the way out into left field. The left fielder couldn't track the ball down in time. One run came across, and then he lost it again to allow that second run. And now it looks like there's going to be a mound meeting for the Thundering Hurt. Jackson squared the bunt right away, and that's why Carinci came charging in from first base, but just unable to make a good throw. They had the time to get him out, if he, and it was a force out. It would have been a force out, yeah. So all he had to do was put it on the third baseman over there, but a wild throw, and Ohio takes advantage, and Johnson on the error gets all the way to third base with still nobody out here in the inning. And then bring up Kale Baker, who has kind of struggled a bit this season. He is 0 for 1 with a walk. But, I mean, he is a power hitter, and it looks like they're going to have the infield standing right on the edge of the grass, all four of them, to try to chop this runner down at home. As the infield is in, like Andrew just said, as the first pitch is a called strike into Baker, nothing in one. And in Baker, everything's kind of rolling Ohio's way. If you're one that's trying to right the ship on your season, this would be a good game to start it. Bobcats come in at 500 on the dot, 6-6. Six and six. As now time called in the box, Baker up in the count, 1-0. and oh. Infield still drawn in. Harrison Johnson over there on third base. Weyrich comes set. Here comes the delivery, and it misses low for a ball, 2-0. And, oh. and the... Official keeps saying two and one. That's only the second pitch. And it is two and one on the count. Or um, maybe he's saying one and one. I think that I think the umpire is confused. Baker comes set. Or Baker stands in the box. Wayrich comes set rather. Here comes a delivery. And it will miss for a ball. And, and that will make the count two and one. I still think that umpire was confused. I'm I'm 90% sure that was only the that was the third pitch there to Baker. Still nobody out. Runner on third. Bottom seven. Three one. Bobcats lead it. Baker check swing. He went around on that one and actually got a piece of it into the catcher Schaefer's mitt. As that'll make the count two and two. And Baker here. I mean. You would like to get the ball in play, but you, you need to get it to the outfield here if you want to get an RBI either way. 2-2 Two -two pitch home. Big swing and a miss from Baker. Strike three. Weyrich gets his first out since coming into the ball game. And one away now with still a runner on third for the eight-hole batter, A.J. Roush. All right, so it looks like the infield's going to stay where it's at. Roush, you just got to, again, you got to try to push something to the outfield to score this run. Otherwise, you're going to be out at first and the runner's going to stay at third or get chopped home. Rouse so far in the ball game, 0 for 2, lined out to right field and struck out as he takes a swing at that pitch on the low outside corner and unable to make contact, 0 and 1. Infield still drawn in for Marshall, trying to cut down that runner that's on third base for the Bobcats with one away in the bottom of the seventh. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. That one will miss inside for a ball, evens up the count at 1-1. One one. Rouse taking another look at the third base coach, trying to see what he needs to do here. He's in a 1-1 one -one count and try to score this run. Well, if you just make some soft contact over the infield, you're going to have an easy base hit here. Absolutely. If you're Roush, here comes a 1-1 pitch. That one misses low and away for a ball, 2-1. and one. Well, it's just a redshirt freshman becoming a, becoming a key piece of this Ohio baseball squad. 
or at least trying to. Two one delivery home swung on lined out in the left field. That would get all the way to the wall for an easy RBI base hit. Turning first and heading to second is Roush. He'll be there with a stand up double coming in to score is Harrison Johnson and the Bobcats have a four to one lead over the thundering herd. That was a great job by Roush there to get a piece of that. Got it just past the glove of the third baseman there. Picks up his third RBI of the season. And the red shirt freshman now stands at second base. And Joey, Ohio did what they needed to do early on. They kept close. They kept fending off Marshall. They waited for the offense to get going, and now it started to finally show up here. It'll be Nick Dolan, the nine batter, up next, trying to keep this train rolling for the Bobcats in this seventh inning. Weyrich comes set with a runner on second base. Nobody holding him really there for Marshall. Dolan squares the bunny, pops it straight up and hard off the backstop there. Look out if you're down in the front row there. As yeah. the ball ricochets around. Yeah, it went over the net, hit off the press box here, and then came right back down. Not the ideal spot for a bunt. No, not ideal at all. <laughs> runner on second, 4-1 to one lead for the Bobcats with one out in the bottom of the seventh. It might be the first time I've seen a bunt actually almost go over the press box. We'll see if Dolan squares the bunt again. There comes the 0-1 pitch. That one misses high and inside for a ball one and one. They may have seen that one almost hit. The, they may have seen that one hit the press box and went, "All right, that's enough of that. We'll go back to normal swing here." And Marshall out of there. Depth of playing at the edge of the infield grass. Now they just have the third baseman pulled up and middle infield at regular depth. Weyrich toes the rubber. Here comes the 1-1 pitch. Dolan swings and just gets underneath it, fouls it back into the netting, and he'll be behind in the count one and two. Dolan here, you just need to, need to make some contact. Move that runner over to third to where at any pitch he could just be able to come home, whether it be a pass ball, a wild pitch, or a hit the next time. But you just got to find a way to move the runner here. As that double for Roush was his seventh RBI on the season, just his second extra base hit. One-two pitch, bounces in the dirt. Schaefer does a nice job blocking it to keep the runner at second base. As that will even up the count of two. Bobcats trying to keep building on this lead here. Right now they're at four, and it'll be a nice time for Dolan and Roush to switch spots. Weyrich checks the runner at second a couple times. Now we'll come home with the 2-2 pitch. Dolan grounds it left side of the infield, fielded in the hole by the shortstop. Long throw over to first just in time to retire Dolan. It's a good strong throw there from Sankovic. Retires Dolan. Runner does, however, move up to third base on the play. Now a runner just 90 feet away from scoring with two away as the lineup turns over for Isaiah Peterson. Peterson had himself a rough go at it so far this afternoon, but he can make up for it here, give himself an RBI with two outs. And like we said, Rouse stands at third. Peterson 0 for 3 so far in the game, a fly out, ground out, and strikeout for him so far in the ball game. But a chance to open up this lead even more. Already three runners in, in the inning for the Bobcats. First pitch to Peterson, misses low. Schaefer loses it for a second, but doesn't squirt far or enough away from him for the runner from third to move up. And I, honestly, I thought he was maybe, I didn't see where the ball was. I didn't see it when looking around him. I thought he was trying to play a, hey, I don't know where the ball is. Come try to come across the plate and get the runner out. Yeah, I've seen that one a couple times. Not sure quite at the college level, but. Well, that's true. 1-0 pitch, another one bounces in the dirt from Way Rich as Schaefer has to slide to his right to keep that one in front of him. As now he'll have to take a couple steps off the mound. He licks his hand, trying to get a better grip on the ball. The count 2-0 to Peterson. Not really going a lot of things right for Marshall right now. 2-0 pitch. Peterson tried to check his swing, but the home plate umpire will rule that he did swing. So Weyrich battles back with a strike there. Two and one, two outs, bottom seven. Four to one, Ohio leads it over Marshall in this just single matchup 
here this week for the two teams. They will meet again later on in the season. Yeah, just a little bit later, next month. 2-1 pitch, big swing and a miss there from Peterson to even up the count at two. Wait, right. Might get himself out of this inning, giving up damage, but maybe limiting it to three and not four. Roush on third base. 2-2 two -two count, two away, bottom seven. Wayrich sat at the belt. He'll come home with the 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and missed, and they get Peterson swinging for the strikeout. Second strikeout from, of the inning for Wayrich, but not before the Bobcats score three to take a 4-1 lead heading into the top of the eighth. Let O'Neill Hartman Insurance show you how Grange's strong value and fast claim service delivers league-leading coverage. O'Neill Hartman Insurance will find you a Grange auto policy that balances competitive rates and responsive Grange claim service. O'Neill Hartman Insurance considers Grange their go-to company for their combination of great value and outstanding claim service. Call O'Neill Hartman at 740-797-4685 or visit them online at O'NeillHartman.com. You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. The past year and a half, we've all been part of unprecedented times that have been heavy. At Integrated Services for Behavioral Health, we have been here for you throughout the heaviness of the pandemic and will continue to be here for you whenever you need us. Checking in on your behavioral health and well-being is more important than ever. If you feel like you can benefit from home or community-based support, counseling, peer recovery support, and a myriad of other services we offer, please call us at 800-321-8293. We're here for you. Top of the eighth inning here at Bob Wren Stadium. Four to one lead for the Bobcats over Marshall off the back of a three run bottom of the seventh inning for Ohio. Do up for Marshall this inning, middle of the order, four, five, and six. And staying in the game is Chase Harris, who got the last out of that seventh inning, stranding runners at the corners. And that's really been the story of the game. I mean, Marshall's out hit the Bobcats eight to four as the first pitch of this inning comes in. Big swing from Leach, fouls it straight back into the netting, but seven runners left on base for Marshall so far in this game, all of them in scoring position of those seven, eight total in the game. Yeah, that's uh, you, you leave eight stranded total, seven in scoring position, you probably aren't going to win the game more often than not. Yo, one pitch misses high inside for a ball, even though the count at one apiece, unless, for, unless you're just launching home runs at that point. Right, yeah, unless... Unless you've had something like 20 hits and you left eight stranded at that point, then you're, you're probably doing fine. 1-1 one, one pitch into Leash. Out in front of that one, swings and misses one and two, and they've done a great job keeping him off balance in this game. One for three with a pair of strikeouts. He's down in the count once again, one and two. Yeah, he's looking for, uh, looking for the hat trick here. Harris got a punch out the end last inning. He's trying to do the same here. One two pitch misses just inside for a ball to even up the count of two apiece. What is it? Uh, four is a sombrero. That's right. I think so. Three yeah. is the hat trick. Three is the hat. Yeah. Four is a sombrero, and then five is the golden sombrero. Yep, that's right. Two two pitch. Harris kicks and deals and it's fouled away by Leach up over top of the press box. Actually takes a bounce off the press box. Right back to the umpire. Perfect. Give an assist to the press box. <laughs> have you ever seen a golden sombrero? In person? I'm not sure yeah. I have. I don't, um, I don't think I've seen I've, I've saw I've seen close. I've seen someone with four strikeouts and two strikes in that at bat, but they never actually struck out. Yeah, I don't believe I've ever seen one in person, no. 2-2 pitch from Harris, jams him as he fouls it over towards the first base dugout, but didn't hang up in the air long enough for Baker to go over to make a play, so it lands foul, and Leach will continue this at-bat to lead off the eighth inning. Doing a great job battling, Marshall. You're, just, you're down to six outs to try to get three runs across. You need to stay alive as long as you can. 
Another 2-2 pitch from Harris. Swing and a miss in the dirt. They tag Leach. Nice job from Minzy staying with it. Third strikeout of the game for Ryan Leach and the leadoff batter in the eighth inning retired. Do I need to take my hat off? Do I need to try to throw it across up over the net? Uh, that's a hockey thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think they do that, that in soccer the either. Sport there. But it, it was just a great job by Ohio, like you said, keeping Leach off balance all night, three strikeouts. That'll bring up the five batter, Travis Sankowitz, 0 for 3 so far in the game. Sankovic, excuse me, first pitch in. Takes a big swing and hits it off the end of the bat. Foul over top of third base dugout and out of play. As Ohio in the middle of a long homestand here at Bob Wren Stadium. They get through this one, have a weekend four-game series with Kent State to round it out as the 0-1 pitch misses low and away for a ball one and one. As this is the time of the year, conference play starts to get into full swing. Everybody travels, usually down south, especially these schools in the MAC go down south to play over the weekend in non-conference play as the 1-1 pitch misses outside for a ball 2-1. It's just not baseball weather here in February. No, it's it's not. And it's, I mean, it's a little absurd that they start the season that early, but like you said, a lot of teams go down south and are able to play. It's kind of a nice little trip for them. Nice little spring breakish, if you will. But it's certainly Ohio, or I'm sorry, it is certainly baseball weather in Ohio right now. Yeah, perfect day for ball here today. 2 1 pitch misses high and inside for a ball. That puts Sankovic in the driving seat. Up 3 and 1 with one out. Top 8, 4 to 1. Bobcats lead it. The 3 1 pitch home. Popped high in the air and out of play down the left field line. And that'll run the count full. They've got the lights on at Bob Ren, and they've been on since probably the fourth or fifth inning, but knock on wood, I don't think they're going to need it here tonight. 3-1. The Bobcats just about ready to get into the thick of it in conference play. They only have about four non-conference games left on the schedule after this one here tonight. 3-2 pitch, swung on and chopped foul. So we'll see another full count pitch. The I'll Bobcats do play Marshall again later on in the year. They also play a couple against Moorhead State and Canisius to round out the non-conference schedule. It's funny how baseball and softball like to sprinkle some non-conference games in the middle of conference play. Full count pitch again misses just outside for ball four. You could see Harris really wanted that one, but it'll be a one-out base runner as Senkovic trots down to first base, and they'll bring up Daniel Karasin. Karasin. Currency, excuse me. Yeah, Currency 0 for 3. He's left two, two stranded so far this afternoon, but, I mean, that just seems to be the story of the game for Marshall. They got to try to right the ship as quickly as possible, down to five outs now to get three runs, and they got one on first. Not a big lead at first from Sankovic. Here comes a pitch into Currency, swings at it, and pops a foul out of play, 0-0. And won the count. I'll tell you what, Joey. This isn't App State background here, but this is a pretty nice background here at Bob Run. You got all the brick in the background from the buildings, all same color. It looks very, yeah, very nice. Great press box to call a game. You got the combo over to the right, and just a great scene of just the college town of Athens. Oh, one pitch runs high and inside, and it catches Currency in the back, and that's the last thing you want to do. With a three-run lead, has put these guys on without making them earn it. That's a walk and a hit by pitch back-to-back, -back, and now Marshall brings a tying run to the plate with one out. Yeah, Schaefer one for three. And like you said, not really what you want to do. It looks like there's going to be a mound visit right now, and no, it looks like they're going to go to the pen. That they will. Because that will be the seventh arm to come into the game for the Bobcats. So that will end the game here for Harris as he's able to get a couple of outs on two strikeouts. As we'll update you with who's coming in to pitch next. The 4-1 lead for the Bobcats in the top of the eighth inning with two runners on.
Bobcat fans, the Hugh White Family of Dealerships is your hometown Athens dealer. And to show our commitment to the community, we're offering free car washes for Ohio University students and faculty, as well as college grad discounts with all of our new brands. But that's not all. We provide free concierge service for faculty. We'll pick up your vehicle and drop it back off after service. Take advantage of our leases in under $200 per month. Come visit us on North Columbus Road, less than five minutes from campus or online at visithughwhite.com. And remember, if the deal is right, it must be Hugh White. is the right-handed senior, Colin Sells, out of Lancaster, Ohio, went to Bloom Carroll High School. As his last outing was back against Kentucky on the ninth, a week ago from today. He pitched one and two-thirds, allowed one hit, two walks, and one strikeout. Sells on the season, this being his fifth appearance, has a 1-3-1-8 ERA in five and two-thirds innings pitch, seven hits. Four runs, two of them earned, three walks, and a strikeout. As he'll be tasked with working out of this jam with one away. Marshall has a runner on first and second, trailing by three. And the good news is, is that you have seven, eight, nine are the next batters up for Marshall. So really, you, you are guaranteed you have to face seven and eight. But that, that's the good news here for Sells is that you're not facing the top of the lineup with one out runners on first and second clinging to a three-run lead. You're facing the bottom of the lineup. It'll be Kyle Schaefer that he will face first. Schaefer one for three so far in the game. He struck out, doubled, and flew out to left field so far. Sangovich is on second. Carinci on first base. For the Thundering Herd, Sells comes set out of the stretch. First pitch home from him, misses low and inside for a ball, 1-0. Sells trying to just work himself into the game right now. Missed a little bit on that one. Got to come back strong on this one. Infield playing at normal depth as well as the outfield playing straight away to Schaefer. Here comes a 1-0 pitch from Sells. That one will catch the inside corner for a called strike, 1-1. One Sells a long look in, set at the belt. Now he'll deliver the 1-1 pitch in the dirt and blocked by the catcher. 2-1 count. It's a nice job there from Mincy to get that glove in the dirt. Yeah, because like you said, the last two runners, they really didn't earn getting on. So if you're Mincy there, you don't want to let them get to second and third without earning it either. Here comes a 2-1 pitch. That one bounces in the dirt as well, and in the driver's seat is Kyle Schaefer with a 3-1 count. I think the frustrating thing for the Bobcats in this inning is nobody's earned their way on base. It was a walk and a hit by pitch, and now Schaefer with an opportunity with a 3-1 count to also potentially draw a walk. 3-1 pitch from Sells. Misses low for a ball, and all of a sudden the sacks are full with Jordan Billups coming up as that'll put the tying run on base. Well, you're still still a ground ball away from being out of the inning. Ground ball, double play ball away. And you're going to get Billups, who is one for three so far in the afternoon. Yeah, it'll be tough to turn two on Billups. He is speedy out of the right-handed box. As the infield still playing back. Middle infield at double play depth. First pitch into Billups. Will miss high and inside for a ball 1-0. And if this keeps at this pace, how long do you leave Sells in? I mean, I know he only played, he only faced one batter. But if he walks another run across. Well, you got to think, you got to maybe be running out of arms. This is a seventh pitcher for the Bobcats so that far in true. the game. You might just have to ride him. 1-0 pitch, chopped over to third, steps on the back at third for one, long throw over to first in the dirt, and it gets away from Baker and rolls up the right field line. One run is in to score. Here comes the second runner. Billups turns second, and that's where he'll stop as Casper Bauer did a great job starting off the double potential double play, but an errant throw allows two runs to come in on the error, and now it's 4-3 to three with the tying run on second base. Yeah, it was just an unfortunate bounce there on the throw. 
It's going to end up making it now the tying run. But, I mean, you do have two outs. So it does have to be a hit here for Leon, who has yet to do so. He has left a man on base as well this game. Beer, Ohio, you need to need to get yourself out of this. And that would have been a huge double play to turn there just to get out of the inning. And now Sells has a lock in with a tying run on base. First pitch misses low for a ball 1-0. and Has errors for both sides now. Have really cost them late in the ball game. That has both. Everything besides the first two runs for each side, or the first run for each side, has come on an air. 1-0 pitch from Sells. Into the batter, Leon, is a called strike on the outside part of the plate, one and one. Sells trying to get out of this inning, still protecting the lead for the Bobcats. Takes a look to the runner at second. Now we'll come home. 1-1 one, one pitch chopped high in the air down the third baseline. Casper Bauer is on it. It's a fair ball, but he was unable to have any kind of time to make the play at first base. It almost looked like he thought he maybe touched it in, in foul territory the way he acted. Yeah, I, I think he was thinking he was in foul territory when he grabbed the ball. The umpire was right there to say otherwise, though. So that's going to be an infield single for Eddie Leon, and now the lineup turns over to Luke Edwards with the go-ahead run now on first base, tying run at third with two away. And you're at the top of the lineup. Like you said, I mean, Edwards 0 for 3, but you'd think he'd be, have to be due for a hit here. Sells trying to work his way out of this jam as the two runs that come in are unearned. Two away, top of the eight, 4-3. Here comes the first pitch to Edwards, grounded out right side of the infield a second. Funderburg picks it up cleanly and makes the throw on to first to retire the side. Big play there from the second baseman to field that one cleanly to get the third out of the inning. Ohio still up by a run heading into the bottom of the eighth. Whether you're coming to Athens to root on the Bobcats, visiting friends and family, or just in town for business, the Hampton Inn in Athens wants to be your home away from home. With 86 sparkling rooms, complimentary high-speed internet, hot breakfast served each morning, and a spa and business center, you can expect a great night's stay with service that will bring you back. Visit us on the web at HamptonInn.com. That's HamptonInn.com. And go Bobcats! If you're traveling to a game, a weekend road trip, or just around town, you need to stop at GoMart. You'll find a GoMart open 24 hours a day right off the interstate or right off Main Street in your local community. You can refuel your ride with quality gasoline and also yourself with popular snacks, drinks, and more. We're making it easy to keep up with your busy schedule by keeping you on the go. GoMart is the proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat football. Go for good times. Jumpstart your day at the Fairfield Inn and in Suites in Athens. Enjoy complimentary hot breakfast, then unwind on our beautiful outdoor patio, which includes a gas fire pit and barbecue grill. Conveniently located on East State Street, just a short drive from the Ohio University campus and uptown Athens, the Fairfield Inn and in Suites is situated near many shopping and dining venues. At the Fairfield Inn and in Suites, you're our number one priority. Call 740-589-5839 to book your next visit to Athens or find us online at fairfieldinn.com. To a one-run lead, 4-3 to three in the bottom of the eighth inning. But Marshall did add two on the error from Casper Bauer to make it a one-run deficit. Two, three, and four do up for the Bobcats, and they'll do it against the third pitcher in the ballgame for the Thundering Herd as coming in is number 32, Carter Lyles, a junior, right-handed pitcher. That's just one inning pitched from Weyrich, as this will be. Appearance number six on the year for Lyles. As he comes in holding a 7.84 ERA on the season. Ten in the third innings pitch, 12 hits, 10 runs, nine of them earned, and eight strikeouts. As the Bobcats maybe will look to scratch across an insurance run or two and try to close things out in the top of the ninth. Yeah, more importantly, they just got to try to, like you said, get an insurance run and then go play some defense. But they have a good, good portion of the lineup up to try to get themselves an insurance run. It'll be Thunderberg, Casper Bauer, and Minzy all do up for Ohio. 
Funderburg digs into the right-handed batter's box. 0 for 3 so far in the game. A couple of ground outs and a pop out to second. Lyle's first pitch of the game, a breaking ball, swung on and fouled off by Funderburg. 0 and 1 the count. Yeah, kind of lucky he even made contact with that one too. He recognized it was a breaking ball and kind of adjusted his swing. It didn't look too pretty though. Lyle's out of the windup. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. Another breaking ball. This one lined out into left center field, and that one will fall in for a base hit. Funderburg rounds the bag at first, and he will have a leadoff single here in the bottom of the eighth inning as he didn't smoke that one, but outfield was playing deep and just kind of a lazy fly ball that no one could get to. Yeah, another, it's the second time this game that Ohio's got the leadoff batter, and when you just gave up two runs, you're trying to get an insurance run. And you're the two-hole hitter. That's a big leadoff batter. That'll bring in Casper Bauer, who comes in one for three so far in the game. Had a single all the way back in the bottom of the first. Funderburg leads off a of first base with nobody out in the bottom of the eighth. Four to three, Ohio lead. Here comes the pitch home. And Casper Bauer will take it for a called strike. Casper Bauer here. What you're trying to do is you're just trying to move the runner once again. You've know, you got Menzi and Harbor who both have hits after you. You're trying to move it to where if they can get a hit, there's a runner in scoring position right now. 0-1 oh, pitch, Casper laces one out in the left field. That will fall in for a base hit. Funderburg hits the bag at second and will stay there. Back-to-back -back singles in the bottom of the eighth inning for the Bobcats. They have two on with nobody out for the cleanup hitter, Minzy. Casper Bauer, the first Bobcat with two hits in the game right now. He's got runners on first and second. And does, a, does his buddy, the catcher, Minzy, a favor and trying to pick him up some insurance RBIs. Well, Minzy started out the rally last inning. He had a single back up the middle and eventually came around to score on the error from Carinci. Two on, nobody out. As Minzy, one for three in the game. Lyles out of the stretch, takes a peek to the runner at second, now comes home. Minzy wanted the hole back, but was unable to. And he'll be down in the count 0-1. Yeah, just as the bat started to pull around, he tried to hold his hands back. But like you said, at that point in time, he had too much momentum and wasn't going to be able to do it. Lyles looking to record his first out of his outing. After allowing back-to-back -back singles to lead off the inning, here comes the 0-1 pitch. Big swing and fouled down the left field line, well out of play, and Minzy quickly behind the count 0-2. I wouldn't say the sun is set here in Athens, but I think we got some cloud coverage and kind of made it a non-factor here later in this game. Lyles, he takes his time out there on the mound, working at a slow pace. Now set at the belt. Here comes the 0-2 delivery. Swung on a miss. Strike three. Minzy swung underneath it. First strikeout for Lyles. And the first batter retired in the bottom of the eighth with still runners on first and second. Well, if you're Herbert here, you want to try to avoid a double play ball. That is for sure. As you're in a good position still, one out. Runners on first and second to pick up some insurance runs. And I'm sure Marshall right now is going to try to get a ground ball out of them. Harbert one for two in the game. He homered back in the fifth inning to tie it up at one apiece at that moment. He's also struck out and walked. He came around to score twice so far in the game. And they could use another big hit from him here. Lyle's first pitch into Harbert. Check swing, and I think he got a piece of it, actually, as he gets fouled off the catcher, Schaefer. And it'll be an 0-1 count. Yeah, the umpire's going to walk a ball out there to the mound and give the catcher, Schaefer, some time to kind of regather himself there, shake it off a little bit. Dusts off home plate, and he lost something on there. Is that the cell phone? No, it was the book of the umpire. Ah, right, right, right. It did look like a cell phone out there. Didn't think you'd want to carry the cell phone out there behind home plate. Yeah, it would be uh, a little gutsy. <laughs> Lyle's 0-1 pitch into Harbert. Misses upstairs for a ball, 1-1. One and one. Could you imagine, though, you're at the plate, and all of a sudden the catcher's cell phone starts ringing? <laughs> Probably throw you off for a second. Yeah, it would be a heck of a way to get someone, like if you're going to do a ball right down the middle, just give the catcher a call and then throw off the batter. 
Lyles 1-1 one, one pitch comes home and he catches the outside corner for a called strike. Harbert will have to protect now with two strikes down one and two. And after what looked like it could be kind of a hit parade kind of inning for Ohio, Lyles has started to settle into the next couple batters. Yeah, he worked himself ahead in the count both times and now he's looking for back-to-back -back strikeouts. Here comes a 1-2 delivery. Hits it off the end of the bat, foul towards the first base dugout. So Harbert protecting with two strikes, and he'll get to see another 1-2 pitch. It was originally a 1-0 lead for Marshall. They scored on an RBI single back in the first inning. Ohio tied it at one apiece in the bottom of the fifth on a Harbert homer. Then three runs came across to score for Ohio in the bottom of the seventh. And then two were added by Marshall in the eighth, and that's how we got to 4-3 to three here. In the bottom of the eighth. Here comes a 1-2 pitch from Harbert. Bounces in the dirt. Taken for a ball. Nice block there from the catcher Schaefer. And the count even at two. That was a big stop there by Schaefer because it looked like the runner on second there, Funderburg, was going to go ahead and try to go for third. But then he recognized Schaefer had the ball and had to scamper back. Set at the belt is Lyles. Checks the runner at second. Kicks and deals, another 2-2 pitch, and it swung on and missed strike three as Harbor tried to keep the hands back on the breaking ball, but he was unsuccessful. After back-to-back -back singles, Lyles gets back-to-back -back punch outs. Now two away with two on for the D.H. Harrison Johnson. Still looking for his first hit today, and what a pitch there by Marshall. It looked like Harburger, or Harbert had a uh, sword up there. So now still two runners on. Funderburg at second. Casper Bauer on first. Two away for Johnson. Lyles a long look to the runner at second. Now he comes home with the pitch, and it comes right down the middle for a called strike. Johnson had the sack bunt that led to the error that allowed two runs to score in the bottom of last inning. He eventually was driven in on an RBI single by A.J. Roush last inning. But trying to find some outfield grass here to give Ohio an important insurance run. As the 0-1 pitch just catches the outside corner for a strike. Nothing in two. Some of the fans, some of the umpires in the stands didn't quite like that one. No, they did not. And Lyles really settled himself in like you've said a couple different times. But he's a strike away from getting out of this inning when it looked like Ohio is going to be able to add to the lead. Lyles set. Ready for the 0-2 pitch to Johnson. Here it comes, and that one misses inside. Gets away from the catcher, Schaefer, and both runs, runners, excuse me, will move up 90 feet. Now there's two in scoring position. Well, now this is, I mean, it was a big pitch before, but now this is a huge pitch because one swing of the bat, a single, is going to score two runs here. That it could. Or if you just hit a soft ground ball in the infield and beat it out, you're going to get at least one run out of it. So that changes the whole landscape of this at-bat here. Easily. Marshall leading in the hits category 9-6, to six, but just not able to capitalize on a lot of their opportunities throughout the game. 1-2 pitch to Johnson line. Back up the middle for a base hit. One runs in the second run, trotting around third. And a big time two out, two RBI single there for Harrison Johnson to give the Bobcats a three run lead in the bottom of the eighth. Well, like we said, that that uh, pass ball or wild pitch, whichever one you want to call it, uh, that changed the whole complexion of that at bat. And Johnson, a two strike, two out hit. And not only does he get an insurance run, he gets both of them. And the Lead back up to three for Ohio. They were able to respond after Marshall was making the little dicey there in the eighth. Top of the eighth. Yeah, well, they get those two runs back. They gave up and now lead it six to three. As for Johnson on the season, those are his first two RBIs, as well as his first hit. First pitch into Baker is a breaking ball called strike on the outside corner, nothing in one. And a great time to pick up your first hit on the season. Absolutely no better time than the present, and the present was a good time right there. Well, that was a long look in. 
with Johnson, the couple step lead off of first base. Here comes the 0-1 pitch to Baker. He drives that one deep out into center field. Back at the wall is the center fielder, but he'll make the grab. As Baker gave that one a ride, but unable to find grass. But Ohio gets themselves a couple insurance runs. They lead it 6-3, heading into the top of the ninth. Three outs away from a victory. Hi, this is Jared Dean with Dean Heating and Cooling. As your local Tempstar dealer, you can experience superior home comfort with Tempstar game-changing technology. Whether you need a fall tune-up or a midwinter repair call, our expert technicians will make sure your heating system is running at peak performance. Count on Dean Heating and Cooling and Tempstar to keep you cozy all winter long. Find us online at deanheatingandcooling.com and go Cats! Voice of the Bobcats, Russ Eisenstein, on behalf of David White Services, the largest heating and cooling dealer in Southeast Ohio. They've been the choice of thousands for over 45 years. Offering the most efficient Lennox heat pumps, air conditioners, and furnaces, David White Services can save you money on your heating and cooling bills. Thanks, Russ. I'm David White. And I'm Esther White Thomas, inviting you to call us today to schedule a free estimate for heating and cooling or a new gas fireplace. David White Services is a proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat Athletics. Okay, people, we all know what's at stake in this game. Zoe, what's at stake? Our futures. Our futures. And is anything going to keep us from achieving our goal? No way. Because what do we have? The plan. Ohio's 529 plan. Because in this family, how do we play the college savings game? Tax free. And where do we play it? Um, I don't know, Daddy. That's okay, Pumpkin. Want to win at college savings? Go to collegeadvantage.com slash bobcats. Send their seventh pitcher out to the mound in the ball game, and it'll be the left-handed throwing Brett Manis trying to shut the door on this one as his last pitching appearance came all the way back on the 6th of March. He pitched against Evansville where he gave up four runs, three hits, two, it's going to be four innings pitched, three hits, two runs, six strikeouts. As Manis has had a pretty good season to this point, making his fifth appearance with a 2-6-1 ERA on the season so far. First pitch of the inning, catches the outside corner for a called strike, nothing in one, as he will have to run through the two, three, and four hitters for Marshall in this top of the ninth, protecting a 6-3 to three lead. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. That one misses high and outside for a ball, evens up the count at one apiece. Yeah, you want to you get the first out here. You don't want to give Marshall any hope like you did there in the top of the eighth. You just want to shut the door as quickly as possible. The 1-1 pitch misses high and inside for a ball as that will put Lucio up in the count 2-1. and one. He's been on the base paths all day for the Thundering Herd. Three for four, a pair of doubles and a single. He also popped up to short. As here comes a pitch from Manis. Just misses off the outside corner for a ball as that will make the count 3-1. and one. Manis with an opportunity to pick up his first save on the season if he can get three outs here in this ninth inning. That's 3-1 pitch. Big swing from Lucio and fouls it up over top the netting and out of play to run the count full. Well, he started out the at-bat a little, a little rough there. Got out to a down 3-1, but a big, big foul ball there. Puts him a strike away from getting that all-important first out. Full count pitch from the left-handed throwing. Manis breaking ball. Didn't quite get... On top of that one, it almost hits Lucio as he'll trot down to first base with a leadoff walk. And this is kind of how the rally started last inning for Marshall, Andrew. A couple guys reached unearned, and then an error allowed them to come around to score as you just want to see Manis attack the strike zone here. Yeah, right, especially when now you got Williams, who is two for four on the day, already has an RBI. He has struck out, though. So that will quickly put Manis into the stretch after the leadoff walk. Cole Williams digs in for Marshall. First pitch, breaking ball, cuts onto the inside corner for a called strike, nothing in one. Williams two for four so far in the game, an RBI single, a double, struck out, and lined out so far. A one pitch from Manis, misses outside. You see the catcher, Minzy, tried to frame that one on the outer part of the plate, but that will even up the count at one.
Ohio looking to get above 500 with a win here this afternoon. 1-1 one, one pitch, breaking ball, misses upstairs for a ball, and that makes it count 2-1. and one. Mm -hmm. This is getting close. He's just not hitting the spots of the strike zone that he needs to right now. He's not, not too far off, though. He'd love a double play ball. That's where the middle infielders are playing. Not a big lead over at first. 2-1 pitch, misses low and away for a ball, and back-to-back. -back. Marshall batters have worked a 3-1 and one count. Man, you need to get it out here some way, somehow, whether it just be a ground ball and you get the lead runner or a pop-up, something. You just need to get us, yourself the first out and build yourself some confidence here if you're Manis. He will come set, checks the runner at first. Here comes a 3-1 pitch. That one will catch the outside corner for a strike. I think Williams thought maybe he worked the walk, but he'll have to stand in the box for another pitch. You never want to show up the umpire like that. You might just find yourself getting rung up. Big pitch here from Manis. Don't want to allow the first two runners to reach base and have the tying run step up to the plate. Manis' full count pitch. Grounded to short. This could be two. Flip on to second for one over to first. In time for the double play. Just how they drew it up. Taylor made 6-4-3. And now Bobcats are one out away from a victory. And they got to face a guy who is struggling. One for four, Leach. Three strikeouts. Joey, we were joking about the sombrero earlier. He strikes out this time, then the game. He can take off that batting hat and put himself a sombrero on. One for four with three strikeouts is Leach, the man who came in as the leader in home runs and RBIs for the Thundering Herd in this game. Manis from the windup. First pitch, catches the outside corner for a called strike. Man, man, has kind of struggled through those first two batters, but he got the pitch when he needed it. Yes, he did. So that's exactly how they draw it up with a runner on first and nobody out. 0-1 <laughs> pitch. Misses outside for a ball, 1-1. One and one. Big swing and a miss there from Leach, and now, man, it's just one strike away from earning the Bobcats the victory. Yeah, Marshall down to their final strike in front of a decent crowd here that's ready to kind of erupt in cheers at Bob Wren if he can get it. 1-2, two, two outs, top nine. Bobcats up 6-3. Manis, a long look in. Extremely long look in. Now he'll kick and deal. 1-2 pitch, bounces in the dirt inside, taken by Leach, and that'll make the count even at two. Good job by Leach there to lay that one off. Keep the game extended for at least now. Manis quickly deals a 2-2 pitch. That one misses well upstairs and even hits off the glove of Minzy and goes to the backstop to run yet another full count. As that's <laughs> what Manis has done this entire ninth inning. Three straight full counts for Marshall. Well, he's got to get his arm warm up. He's got a lot of pitches he's got to fit into this inning here. Hopefully he just ends this one now. Full count pitch. Breaking ball. Misses upstairs for a ball. So a walk drawn by Leach. Second walk of the inning given up by Ohio. And that will at least move the tying run in the on-deck circle. Now Travis Sankovic will be tasked with trying to keep the game alive. And it looks like a pinch runner coming on for the Thundering Herd. Yeah, as Leach will come out of the ball game. Didn't quite see the number. Yeah, I could not see the number of who came in either. We'll try to get that as soon as we can. Looks like 11 out there for Marshall. Yeah, it does appear to be that number. First pitch into Sankovic is called strike on the outside corner, nothing and one. And if it is a number 11, it would be the infielder Avery Lee. A freshman, and that's exactly who it is, out of Wheeling, West Virginia. A one pitch from Manis. That one stung out into center field. Peterson able to line it up, and he will make the grab in dead center field on the Bobcats. Have themselves a victory over the Thundering Herd. Six to three for their seventh win on the season to go to seven and six. Marshall drops to 10, seven and one on the year. And Andrew, just a game where the Bobcats are able to stay the course. I mean, it looked like it'd be tough early. Marshall was getting a lot of base runners, but weren't able to open the game up early, and the Bobcats made them pay for that 
as they score all six of their runs in the fifth inning or later to win six to three. Right, we, we talked about it. Marshall not able to capitalize. They had a lot of players left on base, and majority of them that, that they had were in scoring position as well. They, they didn't capitalize on them early. Maybe if you're able to capitalize them on capitalize on those, it, it's a different story. But they weren't. Ohio ended up getting the offense to come to life. They held the course. They were able to fend off a little bit of a, a little bit of a comeback there by Marshall in the top of the eighth. Responded in the bottom as well. And the Cats are over 500. Joey, that they are. They give the win to Chase Harris. That's his first victory on the year. Slap the loss to Wayrich for Marshall, and the save goes to Brett Manis. Bobcats, victorious 6-3. to three. They'll go to 7-6 and six on the young season with a four-game set. Coming up with Kent State over the weekend, and Marshall drops to 10-7-1 on the year. For Andrew Allison, I'm Joey Medor signing off. We appreciate you listening, and we'll see you over the weekend for more Bobcat baseball.